Hey, this is Josh Thompson. Thanks again for listening. If this content is encouraging to you, it would mean the world to us if you would rate the podcast. Your rating will help more people find the show. You can also journey with us by subscribing to our channel. And if you share it on social media, please feel free to tag me and our guests. We appreciate when you share this podcast with those you know. We are believing it will continue to stoke the fire in people again. Special thank you to Landmark Coffee Roasters, a sponsor for this podcast. If you haven't tasted their coffee, you got to go check it out. They got the best beans in Southern California. Go to Landmark Roasters com. Type in promo code Stokehouse to get 20% off. That's LandmarkRoasters.com. Special thank you to Ola Canvas, a sponsor for this podcast. They build super durable, high-quality clothing out of Costa Mesa, California. Ola Canvas is a small business of creators making some of my favorite clothing and products on the planet because they take time to build each piece and make it with high-quality material. Check them out at OlaCanvas.com. That's O-L-A Canvas.com. Welcome to the Stokehouse. Time to get fired up. Yee-hee. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Stevens in the Stoke House. <laughs> Aaron, you've been on the show a lot of times. Once or twice. You are a pastor at Legacy City Church, Studio City, Los Angeles. The father of three children, married to Marina for... 11 years. 11 year. years. Mm-hmm. And uh, still balling early in the morning, dunking on fools if he needs to. <laughs> And we are going to, speaking of fools, we're going to talk about 10 things every young man or man should know today. We're going to work through this. We just launched Men's Study, and we had a great Q&A last week, and uh, we thought it was a great opportunity to really break down some of the practical things we wish we knew Hmm. when we were younger, and uh, we still feel young, we still feel strong, we still feel in shape, but uh, we're not as young as we used to be, that's for sure. Definitely not. So we got like 10 topics to work through. We're going to talk about responsibility, uh, taking responsibility, finding purpose, staying disciplined, taking care of your health, managing your money, controlling emotions, uh, being resilient, building good relationships, friendships, uh, good people around you, keep learning, always staying a student, and to have integrity in life, character. Um, And these kind of 10 building blocks being... A good foundation for life uh, to really prepare you as a young guy or uh, maybe even somebody who's um, older listening to it it's just really refresher you know things that um, we're constantly thinking through and some helpful tips and just kind of from our perspective things that we continue to try to work through in life yeah it's, it's interesting me like when I look back being a young man like uh, especially as a Christian um, there wasn't like a whole lot of steps or guidelines that I had to follow. Yeah. Uh, my, my, my dad passed when I was 11, so right. I didn't have that um, that guidance. Uh, and I think that there's, I mean, they call us like the fatherless generation. So right. there's a lot of young men who I think may fall into a similar category, especially within the church that maybe they do have a father, but mm-hmm. they're not uh, walking with the Lord or haven't been the best example. So it's uh, it can be helpful. Hopefully it's helpful and mm-hmm. encouraging to people to to be refreshed or to be reminded of mm-hmm. uh, some just practical things. Yeah, and if you got a um, young guy around you, you know, a son, grandson, um, a friend, a brother, a husband, uh, somebody you want to send it to, uh, I'm sure it'll all be helpful. And all you brothers listening, we're talking to you. You know who you are. We're talking to you, brothers. Uh, let's talk, huh? What do you say? So let's let's uh, let's work through this first one here. Uh, first one on our list is taking responsibility. And I should let you know that we actually typed into uh, AI, chat GPT, give us a top 10 things every young man should know. And it popped up, you know, these 10 categories that were these generic categories. And we, Aaron had been thinking through a bunch of the spiritual categories and angles um, that we would just simply disciple somebody in. And we kind of married these two together because we thought statistically AI is coming the internet and finding what generally young people are looking for or needing. And of course we see that truth. It's just borrowing from the Bible. That's mm-hmm. what they've been doing forever. But taking responsibility number one for the man. Um, we are responsible for our own actions, both good and bad, and we got to learn from them. And um, we need, in order to be responsible for actions, we need to first learn what is good and bad. How do you do that? We must learn um, the Word of God. Knowing God, knowing His Word, Proverbs tells us, 
uh, really the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom, is fearing God. This is the beginning of it all. It's in Proverbs. Um, I'm going to pull it up here. There it is, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. So the beginning of it all really starts with the Lord, with his word. And this is how we know right from wrong. And then now once we discover and learn what is right and wrong through the Bible, through the word of God, then we need to start taking responsibility for our actions. Oftentimes when we're young people, we just want to blame everybody else, right? For our actions, our responsibilities, other things that, you know, re all the reasons, all the excuses why things go wrong. And the fact of the matter is, guys, just, just no excuses. Mm. You don't ever need to make up excuses. You just need to take responsibility for whatever it is. I was late. Uh, I didn't show up and do that thing I said I was going to do. I dropped the ball here. I did that. This is the beginning of it all, is taking responsibility for actions and really starting to install responsibility in your life and this comes in all kinds of different ways yeah it's, it's interesting to see like it play out i've been dealing with this with my son uh at home um trying to teach him this responsibility uh, we we live right next door to uh my sister-in-law and brother-in-law and they have kids around the same age so mm -hmm. um, sometimes my son's like oh, can i go play over there i'm like sure just make sure you're back at this time and so a uh, couple of times he, he missed the, the time. Like I got to walk over there and like, hey, I told you to be home. Mm -hmm. And he starts wanting to make excuses. Well, like this and that. And I'm like, there's no excuse. You knew the time. Do you know how to read the clock? Yes, you do. You know how, what time you're supposed to be back. And it's cool to see him grow in that. Like mm -hmm. the last few times he's went over there, he's like, as soon as it's time, he's like, I hear him running through the door. Psh, I made it back on time. And he's like mm -hmm. excited mm -hmm. to that he's, he's fulfilled his responsibility. And it's a mm -hmm. small thing, um, but it's cool to see it play out. And I think... Uh, men, all men, uh, especially young men, need to learn this this habit, this trait. And when we think about uh, spiritual things, like take responsibility for your own walk with God. Like it's it's not the pastor's responsibility. It's not your parents' responsibility to for your walk. You are responsible for your own That's walk. Good. You are responsible to understand the Word of God, to be able to handle it well. It's it's the individual's responsibility. And so, in all aspects of our lives, as especially as young men, uh, take responsibility. Learn to take responsibility. And when we fall short, uh, own up to the fact that you fall short and and learn from that. Like that that's a learning opportunity mm -hmm. so that we can grow and be better in the future. Mm -hmm. No, it's such a great point. You know, the person who blames everything else around them and has excuses for everything literally never grows. Mm -hmm. It's the moment that you don't blame that person or that thing for what you did. Mm -hmm. And the moment you say, no, that was me. Mm -hmm. Boom. That, that is the first step of responsibility that's the first step of growing as a person you have to learn that as a child you know it's funny to watch eden and shep you know go back and forth and it's like well you know sheppy did this uh, you didn't that didn't know but you did this tell me what you did mm -hmm. you know shep yeah sissy did this you know tell, tell me what you did bud i want to hear what you did yeah and it's like trying to get them you know it's funny that we do that i mean since we're kids we just want to push the blame away. It goes back to the Garden of Eden, right? Mm -hmm. It's the wife you gave me, you know, and then it's the serpent who did it, you know, and it's like everybody needs to take responsibility for their own actions and even grown men. Mm -hmm. You know, if we, if we sin against God, we sin against our wife, we sin against our family, just say it, man. Just come out and say it, take responsibility. It is way more freeing mm -hmm. than trying to do gymnastics and lying your way through and trying to get away. Uh, it's much easier. Aaron, you mentioned prepare yourself spiritually, taking responsibility to prepare yourself spiritually. Um, what are some key ways we can do that, especially as young people? I mean, we, we've chanted it many times before, you know, read your Bible and pray every single day. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's a discipline that the Christian should never depart from. Mm -hmm. Just being in the Word of God, it's it, it's just so life-giving. Like the Word itself says that it's alive, mm -hmm. you know, it's active. Mm -hmm. and, and it it should be a part of our lives. We should be able to know the scripture and not need to depend on someone else to, to tell us, oh, what does this mean? Like, mm -hmm. we should be digging into the scriptures, things that maybe you don't fully understand, wrestle with those things. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, a, there's so many resources that are available to help an individual understand. Like, most importantly, the spirit of God that indwells you will, will is given to us to, to, to lead us into truth. So uh, I would encourage just, just 
reading your Bible and pray every single day. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a simple uh, idea, but as a young man, something that you should develop that habit of doing. Yes, it's a great way to prepare yourself spiritually. Get around good brothers, good friends, Christian, get around good people. I always ask young people, even kids in elementary school, kids in junior high, say, do you know who your good friends are? Mm. Do you know who your bad friends are? You know, help them to be able to identify that. And then they, they get to choose that in their own mind, but they know that those are my bad friends. And those are my good friends. And uh, that's subliminally telling them, get away from your bad, those bad people. And, uh, but we need good accountability. We need good people around us. And then we need to be involved in the church, man. We need to get plugged in, find consistent rhythms of church. And this is how we prepare ourselves spiritually. It helps us take responsibility spiritually for life so that we can lead responsibly, responsibly spiritually in life. Um, what about preparing yourself practically uh, in life, taking responsibility to prepare yourself practically? Um, and and we, we even tagged on here to attract a mate because uh, let's be honest, every young guy is hoping to attract that mate. <laughs> and um, you know, it's, uh, it's, yeah, we get it. You know, it's it's you want to attract that na mate, and it's like, why don't they like me? You know, why why can't I find a girl? Why isn't why won't they talk to me? Why don't they look at me? Well, <laughs> uh, you want to prepare yourself practically to attract a mate. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? That's just being a responsible man, being diligent with the things that are in front of you, mm -hmm. not uh, not being distracted and pulled away in every other direction, but just practically. Number one, you can start with working hard yes get a job get a job if, if you have a job get another job maybe maybe yeah. if you have so much time you you should be preparing for the future uh, i find it hard to, to believe that um a woman wouldn't find it uh desirable to see a guy who's who's busy preparing for his future yes. I, I would think that that would be a desirable trait um you know a, a guy that's you know the <laughs> conquering social media or, or video games isn't as uh in my opinion as attractive or, or as good as a as an attractant for a mate right as uh just being diligent and working hard and, and investing in in the future just practically trying to prepare and set that, those things up especially like now as a, a father of, of two little girls i think of one day i'm gonna be entrusting uh my daughter into the hands of, of some young man and and i hope that that young man is preparing himself like yes. that he has his his ducks in a row he has some money in the bank he's yeah. able to to take care of my daughter so i don't have to worry about whether or not she's going to have a place to live or she's going to have something to eat uh, but a young man who is is doing the right things and preparing himself practically I, I can't wait to hand my daughter off. I want her to experience the, the joy that me and my wife experience in, in relationship. That's a good thing. And so I, I would encourage the young man practically to just start preparing and thinking long term, yes. not, not just short term. Uh, short term thinking leads to long term troubles and disaster at mm. times. So, so think long term. You know, what can I be doing today to prepare myself for the future? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, really dig dig in in these practical responsibilities. Getting a job really does hundreds of things you don't even realize. It teaches you so much in such a small amount of time. And so to delay that, um, you know, not have responsibility in your life and not be preparing uh, to be the pastor of your home, the protector of your home, the provider of your home, really thinking that through and having that in mind long term, you know, you, you start taking small steps, just like what Aaron said, getting a job, you know, kind of uh, starting to get your life in order. And even small steps is better than no steps. And so you really want to be preparing yourself uh, to find a mate. And if you're not preparing to find a mate, you're probably not going to find one. <laughs> that's true. I mean, that's just going to be it, you know? And so there's lots of ways to do so, but it's taking responsibility, not blaming everybody around you for why you're not finding a mate, blaming your situation, blaming all these excuses as to why it's like, no, it's on your shoulders. It's your backpack. You got to carry it up the hill yourself and you got to figure out, you can't be giving your backpack to everybody else to carry. You got to figure it out. Um, and then preparing yourself mentally, uh, really taking responsibility mentally and not letting your mind uh, wander off into darkness and to become mentally ill. It's so sad when this happens. Um, and this is not managing our own mind. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't just uh, happen overnight. 
Um, it's a it's a it's a process of steps that lead us to a mental illness, and that's because people, um, yeah, abuse substance. This is because they um, uh, people don't take care of their minds and do hard things, become very lazy in their own mind, kick back and just not focus on any anything that's difficult in life. If you want to become lethargic and lazy, just don't do anything hard. Always take the easiest path mm -hmm. and you will not build any mental toughness. And then when something tough in life comes along, it will be very difficult to overcome. Yeah, it's, and there's, there's, look, I, I know that there are people who've experienced situations that, um, could lead to, to mental health, you know, the way they were brought up, certain situations sure. and circumstances. So I'm not saying that, uh, I wouldn't say that that's, uh, you know, a, a negative on them, but to say that those things can still be overcome. Like That's you right. and I both came from, from rough backgrounds and, yeah. and we could have easily let those things be an excuse and why, you know, I, I can't do this or I can't do that. But instead we, we sought to, to overcome in those situations and, and to persevere uh, mentally. Um, you know, the Bible talks about taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And so all those thoughts, all those excuses, taking those captive and, and finding the opportunity to, to, exercise responsibility. What what can I do? Yeah, the situation may be this, the, the culture may be this, the society may be this, the economy may be this, but what can I still do? Like yes. there, there's there's a ton of people who are not making excuses and are killing it. And so if, if you're not, then you have to ask yourself, what am I not doing? What do I need to be doing uh, to, to, to be able to kill it and, and to go out and, and, and to produce? Um, and so being able to get yourself out of a funk mentally uh, can be uh, helpful in, in accomplishing those, those ob objectives. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Mm. And uh, we have seen people, I would even reference myself, to be honest. I feel like mentally I was pretty sloppy, like through my high school, even leading into college. I was all over the map, you know, my brain and... Um, and probably because of the upbringing and because of all the different things I'd gone through. But at the end of the day, I don't get to blame all of that. Like I need to start by the grace of God, honing this mind, setting it on him. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Mm -hmm. um, we got to get our mind focused on him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom mm -hmm. and knowledge. And so it's amazing that if you just focus on God's word, you get yourself praying to him, walking with him. You get good mentors and men around you that can help you correct the things in your life. You will, you'll start growing very quickly. If you listen to correction, listen to discipline, um, you'll, do, you'll do wonderful. But again, we must take responsibility as men. We don't push it on our wife. We don't push it on our kids. We don't push it on those around us. Well, that's why this is happening to me. No, 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 no. If you're saying that, brothers, about anything in your mind, in your heart right now, I'm doing this because of that, and you're blaming something else, you have an excuse, you got to turn that back around and say, no, nope, I'm not going to do that. What can I do today in Christ, um, working out my salvation the best that I can, and just yielding to him, what can I do to take steps to start to correct that in my own life? Amen. Number two, finding purpose. We think uh, number two most important thing for a young guy is to find purpose in life. And I want to rattle off some generic things that every man is called to. It is very, very rare that you would not be called to this. Mm -hmm. Even though it's very prevalent in this day and age, that does not mean that everyone's called to this. Um, you as a man are called to work with your hands. You are called to work all the days of your life. What? Yes. You are the breadwinner of your home. You're to work. Now, in some situations, your wife's making more cash. That's fine. But I'm telling you, you are to call to be the primary worker of your home for the rest of your life. Your wife wants to work and do something. That's great. But you are not to be the mom of the house. Uh, you can be, there are super dads out there who do this kind of stuff, but I'm telling you that is not how God, did. can you have babies? Can you nurse them? No, nope. the wife can do this. She is made and built to do this. Um, 
and you are made to work and provide. And so until you get this one dialed, this is part of your purpose in life. You're going to wander. You're going to be wandering in the desert, looking around for water. You're going to be, and I, we, we see lots of guys like this, Aaron. Mm -hmm. They're just wandering. You, your purpose in life is to, number one, know God, know Christ, walk with him. Number two, it is to work. Number three, it is to get married to a woman, brothers. Uh, I need to say that again. Get married to a female from birth, yes, in this day and age, praise God. And you need to have children, be fruitful, multiply, and subdue the earth. This is the design from day one. When you go down this path and you accomplish these things, your purpose, your cup will be overflowing with joy, peace, and rest. I'm telling you, if you choose not to do these things, you will wander and you will wonder. And as you grow older and older and older, you're going to be like, what am, I, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? It's a sad place to be in for, for a guy. And, you know, those guys who do wander, sometimes I... I I wonder if it's just like, well, I, I, I haven't found that job because I, I, I'm not passionate about that. I, that I, don't get me wrong. I, I want people to enjoy what they do. I want them to enjoy their job. But that shouldn't be the primary focus of your job. Your job is to help you provide. You got to eat. You have to live. You have to pay bills. Like, if you're not passionate about it, it may suck for a season, but at least you're working and you're gaining skills. You're gaining abilities that you can leverage and, and find a job maybe one day that you are passionate about. Don't just sit on the sidelines until you find that dream job that just lands in your lap because more often than not, that's just not going to happen. Uh, there's, there's hundreds, if not thousands of people who work jobs that they don't like. Men that are just continuing every day to show up. Why? Because they have to take care of their kids, they have to take care of their wife, they have to provide and protect and pastor their families. And that's not a bad thing, it's not a terrible thing. If I bet you if you talk to all thousands of those guys, they would say that it is a joy to be able to do this, even though they're not passionate about it. And when you get a job and, and you're providing, you can have passion projects on the side. Um, and I would, I would say that sometimes guys who find things that they're passionate about and they pursue them as a career, it, it takes the passion out of it because now I have to do this for uh -huh. work. I have to do this uh -huh. for, and, and so uh, I, I'm not to say that every situation is like that, but it, it can happen. So just find a job, find something that will earn you an income so that you can take care of your family and your future family and, and start to prepare for that. Uh, the, the passion may come after the fact uh, and don't allow that to be an excuse. Just pursue that and, and figure out what your purpose is and that is to provide, protect, and pastor your home. Yeah. I mean, it's a luxury in this day and age to be able to do what you love. I mean, for thousands of years, no man is doing what he loves for work. Never. You got like three options. You're going to be a farmer. You're going to be a construction guy. You know, you're going to be a, I don't know. You know, it's like you kind of have a couple opportunities and that's it. You're, you're not going to be the blacksmith in town. Like that's one family, mm. you know, like everybody's not going to be a blacksmith. Like there's one guy in town who does all of the iron work. Right. I mean, that's in, in, if you think about that, I, like thinking that you're all of a sudden going to be an artist and like paint for the town and that's going to be your passion. Everybody's going to pay you money to do it is very rare. The Vatican's going to hire you to come paint the ceiling. Like that's like one guy, you know, like you're probably not that guy, but in this day and age, it is a luxury that you get to, you can build your passion and make money doing it. And so that is it. You just, you have to understand that people have not been doing this for thousands of years. This is a new thing that has just shown up probably within the last 30, 40 years where you can do what you love and work at doing it. But what Aaron's saying and what I'm saying is, you know, you should first probably just do whatever you do really, really well, whatever your skill set is, make a bunch of money doing that, get that locked first. And then on your free time, go and build that passion project. And if that passion project overtakes, um, um, income wise and overtakes, um, provision wise, uh, the, the day to day, you know, work that you're doing, then you, then you hit the jackpot, man. And now you can, now you can go and build that business or build that craft or that passion or whatever it is and just make a killing doing it for your family. But you don't start there. It's, you know, it, it's really sad. Uh, a lot of guys are doing that here in LA. 
it's, and they are burning up their lives. Uh, I was recently just talking to my nephew about this. He's in high school. He's and they have a HVAC uh, RO was it ROP or ROTC program or something okay. like that, like yeah. a, a on campus program. Wait, ROTC or, HVAC program. Yeah, so like he can by the time he graduates, he'll be able to get a job in, in HVAC, which wow. make decent money. And he's, I was asking him, like, are you going to do it? He's like, oh, my mom and dad, you know, they want me to, but I this don't is, know. Uh, this is air, air conditioning and heat. Correct, yeah, uh, air conditioning and heat. Um, and, and so he's, he's like, wavering whether or not he wants to do it. And my brother and his wife are, are encouraging him to do it. But he's like, I don't know, just like, I'm not really excited about it. I'm like, look, just do the program. Mm -hmm. It's free. You get free training, free education, land a job somewhere. So then at least you, you've, you've attained something. You have something to fall back on. Instead of just floating through life, yep. trying to figure it out, at least you have something to land on. So at least once you land there, if, if you want to go try something else, great, you can. And if that fails, at least you can land back where you, 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 the lowest you can ever go is to that position. And you'll always have a skill and a talent that's going to be in demand. I mean, as hot as it's been, people always want their AC taken care oh, yeah. of. So oh, yeah. you will be okay. Oh, yeah. So I'm just I'm trying to encourage them in that. Like, and then you have so much time ahead of you. And I think that perspective is, totally. is it's so hard to grasp when you're a young person. Like that time, like he's... 15 years old right like, you think that a year is going to be the rest of your life and it's like a year is nothing like, right these next two years are nothing right in in comparison to what what is in front of you so um yeah just pursue what you you need to do for the time it may even suck it may not be fun but you have to do it to get to where you need to get and so you can use that point as a leverage point to move to the next thing I think a lot of people are lured in by, you know, YouTube success and social media success. And it's like, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want that to be my passion. I want that to be my money maker and all this stuff. And I was just telling Katie about this. One thing I noticed is so for every like one YouTuber who like makes it and is like raking in 20 grand a month or whatever, you know, you have like thousands who are only raking in like a thousand or two thousand bucks a month and they do that and they get their 30 fifty thousand followers subscribers and they get a little bit of fame and some people recognize them in town and they're making a little bit of money but check this out all of a sudden they wake up and they're like 26 27 and they're like i got nothing else and my subs aren't working anymore and my income's not coming in youtube's not paying any me anymore and also, what are they going to do? I'm going to go be an electrician right now? Like, they're not willing to let go of that little bit of fame online because they tasted of the little bit of fame. So now they believe that they have to keep pursuing that lane of fame. It's kind of like, it's kind of like acting. You know, they, you get that one part, you know, when you're 22 years old. And you're, I was in that movie and I was that person and this and that. And it's like they think it's going to hit. And they keep going 25, 27, 30, 35. And now it's like... You know, I, I got a Toyota commercial over here that helped me this year. And I got a, this over here this year. But nothing ever hits. And then they want to get married. And they want to have kids. And they can't provide. And they, then they don't want to go and work it in and out. They're like, I'm not going to go do that. I'm an actor. I'm famous, man. I'm a YouTube star. You know, like, I can't go work it in and out. Like, I'm going to walk in and out with that hat on. And somebody's going to be like, is that you? You're working in and out? You're like, yeah. Yeah, I failed, you know. Actually, I'm the manager here and I'm making 150k a year more than I ever made doing YouTube. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like and it's steady. Yeah. And I could work this for 30 years and have a pension like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. And probably buy, you know, million dollar house, I don't know, you know, like I mean, you can get set up so fast. Mm -hmm. But people don't see that. So again, you young guys, man, I'm telling you lock in Whatever you're good at, lock in something that consistently makes money. If you do that, this is 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. You consistently do this. Even if you can start to build a business out of it, your trade or your craft, I'm telling you, 10 years of doing that, 20 years of consistently doing that, you could sell that business for some really good money and probably go on and do your passion work for the rest of your life, whatever you want to do. But if, you, if, if it takes you forever to wake up, 30, 35, 40, and then you finally wake up and you're like, you know, I, I should do this. I should do that, you know, and then you're, you're like, just like all of us, just like me, Josh Thompson. I wish I would have started this when I was 
you know, 20, 21, 22. Why didn't I start back then? Yeah. And, and to that point, like it's, I'm, I don't want to put myself here saying like, oh, I have it all figured out and I did everything correct. I'm just trying to share things that I hope one young guy hears and, and takes action so he doesn't find himself like me wishing that I would have started early, wishing that I would have done this. I wish I would have looked at it a different way. Like if you take away just a, a little bit from this and, and can do the right thing and pursue something and set yourself up for success, that 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 is what this is for. Let's, this Let's talk about risk for a second here mm -hmm. because that's the reason why people don't do it, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's it's the fear of, of failure, I, I think, a lot of times. But uh, one thing I even have to remind myself, even still today, is that even with failure, it's it's profitable mm. in that you can learn. Mm. Like, you will learn so much from making a mistake that you will not have to endure that same pain in the future because you've learned it earlier. And so if you can take risks even earlier. It's easier to take risks when you're young. When the, stock, the, the stakes are a lot less. Like, for me, as a married man with three kids, like, it's... That's the risk. The, the the it's a lot higher than totally. if I was just when I was twenty one by myself, rented a room with the guys for two hundred, three hundred bucks a month. Like, if if it if it fails, like, yep. what's the worst that's gonna happen? Like, it, it, but if I fail today, there's no food on the table. So let's say working at Pepsi, hanging with the guys, making all right money, and then you're like, you know what? I'm gonna start a business on the side. I'm gonna swing for the fence. I'm gonna invest this in a house. I'm gonna try and buy. I'm I don't know whatever. It's yeah. just like, you just. Because you have a steady income coming in from something stable, and then you just boom, jump off, take great risks of things that you're excited about, and that's how you win. Mm -hmm. But it's like as you get older, you, you just can't do that anymore. Because if you if you mess up too much with the on a big risk, you know, really could mess up your wife and your kids, and so it's much easier when you're younger. Yeah, I would definitely encourage young men to, to do that, to take risks. Like you exactly, you set it up perfectly to, to have a stable income coming in maybe you're working 40 hours somewhere. That's not all the time in the week. Like you have more time than that to devote to whatever passion project you wanted. You have a steady income. Now you can invest in whatever project you want to. Um, but it's important to have that first thing locked in to have that steady income. It's, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's why we're talking so much about work. Exactly. And your purpose. Your purpose is to know God and walk with the Lord Jesus all the days of your life. Mm -hmm. your, your purpose is to get a good, stable job and start building your life, working, so that you can find a wife. The, most, the number one most attractive thing for a woman is provision. Mm. I'm sorry, brothers. I know you think the six-pack is going to do it, but I'm just telling you, number one is provision. Uh, I mean, next to walking with the Lord Jesus. Yeah. I think another way to say it too is, is uh, security. That's like, good. Yeah, the, 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 the number one, the core need I've heard many times said is uh, for a woman is security. Mm. And, and security comes in multiple forms. Safety. Like, yeah, you want to protect her. You want to make sure that she feels safe. But she also, wants her kids to feel safe. Yeah, she wants to know that her kids aren't going to go homeless, like that, that her future family isn't going to starve. Like that's, those are all components mm -hmm. of security and yeah. if you can provide that that makes you that much more of an attractive candidate you go from a five to a ten <laughs> you were just a five brother <laughs> but you got money in the bank and you bought a house and you're only 22 years old and you got a car that works bang you just became a nine and a half <laughs> um just saying so that again so you can find a wife and so that you can have kids this is how god has designed you and this is what you were called to do. Then you can get after all the passion things you're fired up about, all the calling ministry, side projects, all the things that you're excited about doing, serving in the church, going on missions, helping people in the neighborhood, whatever it might be, you know. Um, you find your calling, but these things are definitely foundational. Yeah. Let's talk about staying disciplined. Number three, uh, top 10 things young guys need to know is staying disciplined is, is one of the top. Yeah, it's it's one thing to to have a job or to get a job, but <clears throat> keeping that job, being being disciplined to show up on time, to to have a character and attitude that is consistent over long periods mm -hmm. of time, staying disciplined, wh wh whether that's regard to going to the gym and working out, or keeping that job, or uh, serving at church, or whatever it may mm -hmm. be, just be disciplined. That's that's long term uh, action over time. Like just being disciplined to do the right thing is a uh, I don't know. It's just it's it's a setting yourself up for success, and, and uh, I encourage 
every young man to, to be disciplined in the way that they just go about life and, and be consistent. Discipline yourself into godliness. Mm -hmm. Discipline yourself um, into good works. You know, um, I think of Jordan Peterson, you know, because he kind of, um, he kind of deducted to like the lowest form of discipline. Mm -hmm. Cause like, how do you teach a man to be disciplined? How do you teach yourself to be disciplined? Find something that you might be able to be disciplined in and then do that thing every day. And that will build that discipline muscle. And then you can move on to the next thing. And his, you know, the first of 10 or 12 tenants that he gives is make your bed, mm -hmm. right? Which became famous. Yeah. It's a simple, simple idea. Just make your bed in the morning. It's, it's a simple truth that or something simple that anyone can can do and uh and it also if you're not doing it it's it also tells a, a lot about the individual just just make your bed just clean your room make your bed make sure your own house is in order before you go and, and criticize the rest of the world mm. and a lot of the things that you know jordan peterson shared like they're just truths mm -hmm. like just truth and all truth belongs to god it's just things that are are articulated in a, a more i guess uh it, easily digestible way mm -hmm. but um they're they're simple truths just just be disciplined in the small things and that will just like the scripture teaches if you're faithful in the little things you'll be faithful in the, in the bigger things mm -hmm. like, so just develop discipline over time i think that when i analyze discipline um from a practical standpoint i think i go back to sports like as being maybe the first discipline in my life and that's where repetition showed up mm -hmm. for the first time. So somebody else was instructing me in that. Um, but I'm trying to think through the guy maybe who hasn't had that as well. And that's what we say, like Jordan Peterson pointed out, like every man can make their bed every day. And if you just start that, you'll probably be able to do something else every day that you want to do. And you, you can slowly work your way to being disciplined in almost anything. And uh, from the extreme of like an Iron Man. Mm -hmm. An Iron Man, uh, you cannot accomplish and do like you literally will not be able to finish the race, which it consists of swimming, biking, and running. But it's it's unbelievable. It's like an entire marathon. It's like I don't know how many miles, fifty, sixty miles of biking, uh, and it's like three miles of swimming, uh, twenty six miles of running, I believe, something like this. So so you cannot get to that extreme place without discipline. And the only way you do that is by training every single day in each of these sports, <clears throat> in each of these categories, and starting to discipline yourself to this pinnacle, you know, place of being fit so that then you can go to the race and accomplish. And, and, and the goal is not to win the race. Mm -hmm. The win is just finishing the race. Exactly. And, but again, if you rewind that all the way back to just making your bed, and uh, not getting up and swimming a mile today, you know, how are you going to do that? But just making your bed today, the most simple thing, form of discipline, um, that's where it begins. But I, again, back to sports, you know, I think it's kind of one of the, the first places where you start doing something that you don't want to do. So the coach says, go run a lap. And you're like, oh, but everybody goes and runs the lap. You have to run the lap. We're going to do this drill 10 times. You get to the seventh time and your body starts giving out and he's like, you're going 10. I mean, you're going eight, you're going nine, you're going 10. So you start disciplining yourself mentally, emotionally, you're even starting to give up. And then, so heart is showing up and physically you are commanding your body. And so you're, you're doing these disciplined things and sports creates an overall discipline, mental focus, physical focus, mental, emotional focus that can actually transfer into real time in life. When your boss tells you to show up on time, you're going to have to discipline yourself in all those things prior to get there at that time um, or to get that job done or whatever it may be. But it is hard to discipline yourself. Yeah, it, it, it is. And I think if you look at discipline just for discipline's sake, it's it's extremely hard. But when you think about discipline as a means to, to accomplish results, mm like that's that can be a little bit more encouraging and can allow it to seem as uh, a little bit more uh, purposeful mm -hmm. and and so i i always try to encourage the idea of making a plan like have a plan and then that discipline 
is to help execute the plan so you can achieve certain results. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to get fit. Okay, create a plan. I'm going to work out three times a day. I'm going to eat this diet. And this is the plan. And I'm going to be disciplined to be consistent at doing these things to get the result that I want. Uh, I, I want to start a company. Okay, well, what do you have to do to start a company? Oh, well, first I, I need to do some market research mm -hmm. or I need to understand uh, creating a business plan, doing, doing the, the starting with the plan and then executing the plan is the dis discipline that is necessary to achieve the results that you want. So uh, I would encourage young men to, to have a plan like you. We talked about just getting a job and understanding your purpose. That's great. You need to have that as a foundation. But if you want to achieve if there's certain things that you desire in life create a plan like just sit down with a piece of paper what do i want my life to look like in five years what do i want my life to look like in 10 years do i, I want to be married when i'm 30 i want to be married when i'm 25 whatever the, the situation is for you create a plan just draw it out and that plan can change mm -hmm. but at least you can apply discipline so that you can see yourself moving the ball forward to accomplish the 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 goal that you have in in, in plan for yourself and and then you see the results and the discipline will help help you get there mm. When it, we're talking about the word discipline, I'm reflecting on, I guess, the, the biblical look at discipline. And obvi the obvious sticks out in my mind is um, the Lord disciplines those that he loves. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> one of the first places of discipline in our lives probably comes from our parents. And if we don't have good discipline as children, then we ha will have a problem disciplining ourselves in the future. And... Um, that's obviously a gift if you have great parents who are able to discipline you and teach you right from wrong and help you limit yourself. The word discipline is just teaching. Mm. And so they're teaching you um, how to control yourself. And, um, you know, Shep and uh, Wes, they, uh, the ball uh, can roll all the way down the driveway into the street. And, of course, their inclination is to go under the, under the fence and to go and get the ball out in the street. I've been telling them, you cannot go on the other side of that fence. If you go on the other side of that fence, you're going in timeout, you're getting in big trouble. And, uh, and so they have gotten in trouble going close to that fence and trying to get on the other side. And, uh, and, but what's happening is Shep is dis starting to self-discipline himself to know all he knows is that I can't go over there because there's cars over there and dad's going to get upset at me, but, uh, and I'm going to get in trouble. But it's it's going to it's starting to draw a line in the sand for him of what needs to happen, and I think that when there are people around us who help us draw those lines when we're young, then we're able to do it more when we are older. Um, but if you, you, for some reason you had no discipline in your life as a kid, and you feel very very sloppy around the edges, you're going to have to take these baby steps to start building discipline in your life. How do you walk a mile? one step at a time and first try and walk 10 feet mm -hmm. and then uh, try and walk 20 feet and then try and walk a hundred feet and go back and just see if you can do that and you just start somewhere small I'm gonna walk 10 feet a day we'll see if I can get 20 feet the next week we're gonna get 30 feet the next week and before you know it you're walking a mile you've disciplined yourself to the goal um, just as Aaron was pointing out without discipline a man can accomplish almost nothing um, and I wish I would have learned that more, you know, when I was younger, I can hear Vince Bueno in my ears. I'm like 19 years old, Josh, write it down, write it down. You know, cause I would forget all the tasks. I don't need to write it down. You know, I have a mental list. I have a mental list. See now you look at my notes, dude, all, I have hundreds of notes of just lists, 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 lists. Thank you, Vince Bueno, uh, telling me to write it down. So I discipline myself to write things down. So I can offload that information off my mind and I can go on to other tasks. And at any moment I can say, what do I need to do? I go right back to the list and boom, there it is. All the things I need to do and we get it done. That's a great point. Stay disciplined. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Success comes not from consistent effort. effort uh, oh, uh, comes from consistent effort, not just talent. Mm -hmm. That's right. Success comes from consistent effort. That's what staying disciplined is. Number four. Take care of your health. Brothers, you got to take care of yourself. Uh, take care of your health. Exercise, eat well, look after your mental health. This is so important and so crucial um, because, I mean, you don't really think about it much when you're young. 
but um, it is crucial because if you're not healthy um, physically, then you're not going to be healthy mentally or emotionally. It bleeds into everything. It literally messes up everything. You don't feel good. You don't feel like you can accomplish much. Um, I heard Rogan talking about this just the other day. He was saying he notices these brilliant scientists who come on who don't take care of themselves. Um, he'll ask them about their health patterns and all this stuff, and they're like in their 60s or 70s. And he tries to get them to discuss deep things and, and, and enter into new categories. And they won't do the exercises to uh, mentally to go there because they don't take care of themselves physically. Yeah. So the physical discipline of exercise and eating right and staying healthy allows you, it opens up your mind to be able to think places that you wouldn't think and go places you wouldn't go and do things you wouldn't do because you're doing hard things all the time. And uh, again, so the, the more unhealthy we become physically, uh, the more healthy we become, unhealthy we become mentally. Mm -hmm. And interesting how all, and emotionally, mm -hmm. then we have emotional swings, we're in bad moods, you know, we don't feel good and we treat everybody bad, you know, all these things, depression, is attached to exercise and eating. Isn't that crazy? I'm depressed. You know, are you sleeping? No. Are you eating right? No. What'd you eat yesterday? I ate all this candy and all this junk, processed foods and all this stuff. Well, no wonder. No wonder. So, but again, no one teaches us this, right? We don't, we, do we Do we have uh, organic food class in high school? I didn't. No? Um, I had a workout class, you know, because we, uh, we had to work out for sports, mm -hmm. but no, none of the, none of these, all the coaches were overweight. <laughs> they didn't know to work out. They're like, uh, just go down lower on that squat. Make sure the golf ball rolls back on your knee. You know, I'm just like now, you know, I look at working out. I'm like, these dudes had no, we were injuring ourselves in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's an important concept for every human to just take care. Like we've been entrusted with these bodies. We're stewards of everything that God has entrusted us with. And, and these are our bodies and we should take care of them. And it's not to, to shame anyone or to make anyone feel less than. It's just you are responsible for every calorie that goes into your mouth. If you're, if you're over consuming, you have to have discipline over that. Yeah. Get, get, get yourself disciplined and, and just try to be as healthy as you can. I understand there's people who have genetic situations and stuff sure. like that where, you know, there's certain uh, things that are preventing you from being at the picture perfect, you know, supermodel weight or, or, or super, you know, sure. buff dude on the, on the front of the magazine. But you can be healthy as you can be. Like totally. You are completely in control of that. And if that's walking for you, if that's, you know, getting on the bike and running because your, your, your joints are, are different or whatever, like just try as much as you can to be healthy. I remember I was watching this, uh, this comparison. I forget where I saw it at. They were looking at PE classes in high schools today versus what they were like 50, 60 years ago. And like everyone 50, 60 years ago was like completely fit. Then they showed everyone a, like they showed a time lapse of, uh, of Times Square, like people just walking by. Everyone just looks slim, fit, like they're just they're healthier. And yeah. then you look at it today and there's it's just complete opposite. Yeah. And it's just it's it's a it's a sad thing to see that this is what America is like. We just we over consume. We're unhealthy or well, there's so many health uh, concerns that are are in, in our society because of we're just simply not taking care of ourselves. And yeah. it's, you don't have to be a gym rat. You don't have to, you know, go overboard, but you should, you should be taking care of your, your physical health, making sure that that's okay. Especially as a young man, it, you should be taking care. If your health starts to decline, then you're not going to be able to work yeah. or, or people maybe not want to work with you because you're unstable in other ways as well. So yeah. taking care of your physical health is, is, a, is an important practical thing. And you can probably remove 90% of health problems just by exercising and eating right, just, just getting in shape. Um, and it, it is sad because what's happened to America is we have processed foods come on the horizon. And this has destroyed everyone. And this has been, this is a massive problem in our society, not in Italy, but in America. It is because Italy protects their borders and they don't allow processed foods to enter into their borders they have laws against it like they're not letting um these companies um you know nabisco is not getting into italy you know um kroger is not getting into italy like it's not happening um and they have all fresh food and they eat bread all day and somehow all these people are still in like just 
great shape, all of them. Um, so why is that? Let's break down the simple. Um, first, I like what you said, Aaron. The body is the temple of God given to us to take care of and um, to manage well. And if we don't manage it well, how can we manage life well? How can we be good men? How can we be good husbands? How can we be good fathers? How can we get to work if we're sick, if we're broken? Um, we need these bodies to run well. You know, I, I say all the time now, I, I can't die. You know, like I got kids who, who need me. Like I got to stay alive. I got to stay alert. And I got to keep charging forward. And so I'm going to do everything that I can to stay at maximum quality. Um, now, I think it's very, very simple. The, the solution to this, brothers, is very simple. Okay? I'm gonna say it's very, very simple. It is not a pill. Mm -mm. It is not, uh, what's the latest one? Ozempic. This is hilarious. Another magic potion. Um, it is not uh, any of these tips and tricks um, outside of this exercise, number one, do something you love. Exercise, move, do something you love. How often? Just do it every day. Why not? Try to do it every day. Do it for 10 minutes. Do it for 15 minutes. Do it for 30 minutes. Do it for an hour. Try to do something every single day. Well, I only got three days this week. Good job. You got three days. Try again every day next week. Uh, just do something because we were made to do something every day. We didn't have vehicles for a long time and you were walking everywhere and so you were doing something physically every single day for thousands of years until the last century. Number two. Oh, but again, I wanna highlight that. You gotta do it what you love. Mm -hmm. If you don't love the exercise, don't even attempt, okay? It yeah, it's gotta be fun, man, or you're just not gonna do it, that's it. So figure out what that thing is and just get on doing that thing. Um, number two, you must eat real food that goes bad. You got to eat real food. What is real food? Well, they call it whole foods, but, uh, it's a, it's a whole food. And, um, you have to eat foods that will, it, it, as clean as you could possibly get. If it sits in a package, then it's probably not a, it's not a real whole food. It has something, some kind of chemical in it to keep it on the shelf for a long time. And so obviously fruits and vegetables are gonna go bad very quickly. Um, <clears throat> meats are gonna go bad very, very quickly. Um, even nuts and things like this are gonna go bad. Uh, lentils, all these things are gonna go bad eventually. They can sit on the shelf for a while, but again, you know, you wanna eat things that are as clean and as whole as possible. If you could cut sugary drinks out of your life and just drink water or drink a tea something simple like that you will lose so much weight so fast you'll clean your body so fast um yeah so eating you know again stay away from process like i mean anything in a package anything sugary any if you look on the back of an item and you see uh, a maximum if you say three or four things on the label that you can't pronounce, that's a bad food, done. Just don't eat it. Yeah. One simple tip that I heard uh, someone share is like, in most grocery stores, the way they're laid out, all the perishable items are around the perimeter. Mm -hmm. So stay out of the, the center aisles where you know all the processed prepackaged stuff is. Uh, just just shop around the perimeter and you know, get some mm. fresh milk, fresh mm. eggs, that's fresh good. vegetables, all the meat, all that stuff is on the perimeter. Uh, it, it's and then you don't have to be super extreme and, and you know, just start somewhere. Just start yeah. eating a little bit healthier and yeah. then you start to enjoy it. And then you go a little more healthier. You start to, to develop habits that, that can be beneficial for your health long term. Once again, get all of the fresh foods that you like. Mm -hmm. Don't get stuff you don't like. Nobody likes to eat that. Get stuff that you like and eat that. Again, even snacks, bars, and all these things in packages are not the best thing. I'm just telling you, it's just not. You want to eat fresh stuff that goes bad very quickly. That's how you know that it's good food. <clears throat> you, like Aaron said, we don't need to go extreme on these things, but if you want to start, you got to move in that direction. You're not going to see any change in your life. You get those two things right. You just start moving every single day, and you just start eating whole foods do not eat anything else packaged like that 
Now, you, you again, not even extreme. If you did like 70% whole foods and you're still eating packaged foods 30% of the time, you're still going to see a drastic change. Yeah. I would add, oh, sorry, go ahead, Aaron. No, I was just going to say, like, I mean, you just said drastic change. I, I think sometimes it gets into the minds of people that, you know, hey, I'm going to hit the gym this week and I'm going to eat healthy and I'm going to see a radical change by next week. It's like, you know, sometimes these things take time. Like, you've spent a lot of time putting into your body things that are not healthy and not working out. Like, you don't become a, a super fit bodybuilder overnight. Like, just stay consistent. And over time, you do that for 10 years, like, you will be amazed at the way your body feels, mm -hmm. looks, and, and, and just the way it operates if you do it consistently over mm -hmm. time. This goes back to the idea of being disciplined. Like, don't expect radical results overnight. Like, the, stay off the TikToks and the, the YouTube short videos that shows that you're going to look like this tomorrow. It's not, it doesn't happen. You just need to be consistent, eat well, and work out consistently, and you'll see results that you'll be pleased with. I think... Um <clears throat> a couple other like minor helpful tips are, um, you know, uh, carbs do not necessarily fill you up. These are things like um, bread and crackers and, um, you know, this, you know, even, I mean, pastas will, but you can consume so much pasta and for some reason you still feel like you want to eat more. But if you eat things like meat, like protein, um, and you eat things like fiber, like vegetables and fruits, you're going to feel full that much faster. So if you eat the carb-based stuff, um, especially complex carbs um, like breads and pastas and uh, crackers and things in boxes and chips and tortillas and this kind of stuff, that stuff does not fill you up. And so that's why you want to keep eating more and more and more of it. And your body never tells you you're full. But if you eat the proteins and you eat the fiber, uh, fruits and vegetables, your body will alert you very quickly. You're full. You eat a massive steak um, and you, you pile up that much pasta next to it. You eat that much pasta, you still eat more. You eat that steak, you're done. Your body's alerting like, I, I don't want any more food. So this is portion control has to do a lot with a uh, type of food. Second thing I would add is that I've found super helpful is, um, is not snacking and eating all day long. You want to limit your, limit your eating to specific hours. And if you can, fasting is one of the most important things you can do for your health, which people used to do for thousands of years. And, and it's not because even, uh, because they were doing it on purpose. It's literally because um, they didn't, they had to wait for meals. You know, it's like you couldn't just snack on demand all day, every day. You didn't have cupboards full of food. You didn't have grocery stores full of food. It's like, uh, yeah, um, we're not eating until the afternoon, 3 p.m. today. You know, that's when stuff's going to be done. So you can go grab an apple off the tree if you want to. And then you go wait. And then the, finally the meal in the afternoon is being cooked. Or um, you have to hunt for a day, you know, or you have to you have to slaughter this animal, and then you have to go and play, you have to prepare, and you got to do all. This. So you don't get to eat on demand. Like I want chicken, you don't just go to the the mart and go buy it. You know, you go to Chick Fil A and get a you know sandwich. Like that's not how it works. Like you have to like you got to pluck the feather, you got to chop the head off, you got to pluck the feathers, you have to skin the thing, you have to prepare it, and then you have to cook it, and you know what I mean? Like you like, no eating on demand. And so the way to mimic that today is by, like, if you just cut out breakfast, you know, and just try to eat at lunchtime and then really just eat from like 11 or 12 all the way to like six to eight and then just shut it off. And now your body will fast from like six until the next day, 12 noon or from 8 p.m. until the next day, 12 noon. And you've just fasted for what 14 hours and that gives your body enough time to render all of that food and all that stuff digest it all cleanse your body start feeling good again you get up in the morning you know it, it, your mind is very clear so again we need to get back into these rhythms of what's called now is intermittent fasting but if you can discipline yourself to do that i'm telling you you can eat a lot more unhealthy between those hours, between 12 and 6 or 12 and 8, let's just say you want to go 50% bad, you know, and you want to eat a bunch of junk during that time as long, you know, along with the uh, the good stuff, your body will render it by the next day 
and then you're doing your walk or your workout in the morning, it's burning up all of that food and you're hungry at lunchtime and you're ready to go again. So these are hacks mm -hmm. that our ancestors used to just do day to day because it's what it was part of their rhythms. They weren't doing it on purpose. It was just the way that it was. Yeah. It was life. Now we have to do all these gymnastics to get around all this processed food and our schedules and trying to figure out how to get these bodies to work. And uh, it's not rocket science. Yeah. Exercise, eat whole foods, um, fast, intermittent fast to some degree, and um, don't snack all day. Yeah, take, take care of your health. I mean, it kind of leads into the next point, what I'm going to share is just the, the idea of eating like how you're talking about, eating whole foods, shopping at grocery stores instead of eating, you know, the fast food, the, the DoorDash, the, you know, Uber Eats, all Make that. Make your own food. Make your, you, you'll be surprised if, if that's not enough motivation, just save your health, so much money. you'll save so much money as a young man. I get it guys. Not all of us know how to cook. We don't know how to prepare meals. If you can get on the internet, if you can watch a YouTube video, you can figure it out. Dude. You, you, and you want to talk about attracting a mate? You know how to cook too. You got your stuff together and you know how to cook. That, that's a win-win scenario. And it kind of leads into the next point, which is, is to, to manage your money. Um, Take care of your finances. That's mm. a, a huge, mm. a huge thing for a young man to to don't just allow your money to just fall out of your pockets every time you enter a store or a shop. Control your spending. Number five, manage your money. Mm -hmm. This is a big one uh, because it will plague you for the rest of your life, and until you figure this out, uh, it will bother you. And um, I remember. I got my first job working at Dairy Queen, hey, ice cream shop. I like some Dairy Queen. Oh, baby. Soft serve. <laughs> the dead cones. I was making uh, 4 50 an hour. Balling. I was, I, was, I was a big baller. Dave, my first check was like 115 bucks, And I'm like, are you kidding me? They're paying me $100. I got 100 bucks, dude. I'm 15 years old. I got $100. Thank you very much for working one, you know, I, w I, w I think I was getting paid uh, every week or every other week or something like that. I couldn't believe they were paying me two to 400 bucks a month as a 15 year old dude. I was like rolling in money. I was money coming out of my ears, dude. Th again, this is when minimum wage was like 515, but they had paid me a training wage of 450 and I couldn't wait to run to Stater Brothers to go buy all the candy and soda I could ever buy. Load it up. I'm buying for everybody, you know? And, um, but that's what happens when you're young and you start getting money and you get your first paychecks. You just want to burn it up on whatever. And you don't learn to manage money. And it takes time. Um, and some people never learn to manage money. But um, I don't know, Aaron, what do you think some of the basic principles to starting to manage? Um, money in life, you know, and, and really discipline yourself to not be spending um, beyond your means. Yeah, um, this by no means am I an expert. Um, I, I grew up with not a lot. So once I, I was just like, as soon as I started getting paychecks, I'm like, what? I can buy things now? Mm. And I just started spending money like, mm. like on dumb stuff. Mm. And so uh, now the the perspective that i have is the the a very basic principle live spend less than you make like that's it, i know it sounds very basic and it is but just don't live outside of your means stop trying to buy things to impress people who don't care like mm -hmm. just live within your means you make a thousand dollars spend less than that budget your money like make sure that you have you know where your money is going uh, someone once said, uh, if you take care of the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. Mm. Know where, where your money is going. Set up, look at, print out your, or go online, find your bank account, your bank statement, look at it and look and start adding up how much money you're spending on things that you probably didn't need to buy. That energy drink, uh, that burger, the, we've stopped at the coffee shop after hanging out. Like you'll be amazed over a month, over two months, over six months, how much money it's just escaped you and, and how much money you would have if, if you had been more disciplined with managing your finances. So spend less than you make. That's the, the basic principle, but also to, to create a budget, you know, you have your bills, 
those need to be paid. You take care of your bills. And then also, whatever's left over, start to allocate that effectively and make sure you're putting some away for a rainy day. Proverbs 22 7 says, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is a slave of the lender. It's talking about debt, and what ends up happening is, um, this is this is how people get themselves in trouble. We'll talk about it. Proverbs three nine: Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your produce. And I love what uh, Jesus said, uh, Luke fourteen: For which of you desiring to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. So, um, and he's basically but he's talking about budgeting there. Um, but um, he, he's talking about counting the cost of following him. Mm -hmm. You know that is that's the context of that scripture. But they're interesting pictures that they understood in that society. And you're right, budgeting is the foundation of managing money. And I didn't know this. I had no clue. I, I was just doing it on the fly. You know, I'm like, I got this much money come in, and so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna spend it on this, this, and this, and we'll see what happens. You know. But no one ever told me maybe I should be saving. Here, here's some good, um, here's some good things. You know, tithe your ten percent. Tithe your ten percent save uh, or invest, save or invest 10%, 15% if you can, and then live off the rest. Mm -hmm. So that that's 20 to, 20 to 25% put away, and that's trying to live off the 75%. Now, how in the world are you going to do that? You're like, I can't do that. Yes, you actually can. Mm -hmm. You actually can. And it doesn't matter what your budgets are. You have to look at what is going on with your spending. And the only way to do that is through budgeting. The, this is the question. Do you know where every single dollar is going in your bank account? Do you know where every single dollar is going? If you don't know where it's going and how much is going to that, then you do not have a budget and you don't know what the budget is. So what you have to do is you have to say, okay, how much is how much are you spending on coffee this month? How much are you spending on food this month? How much are you spending on gas this month? This month, how much are you spending on your payments? I have a car payment. I have a rent payment. I have a fill in the blank. I got insurance. I have whatever. You have a I have a phone payment, and you fill out this budget. Now you can download apps on your phone that will literally do all of this for you. They're budgeting apps, and they'll put they'll, they'll do this for you. All you got to do is look it up and figure out how to enter in all your information, and it'll categorize all these categories for you and show you exactly how much you're spending. Now, if you don't want to do that, you could literally just go into your bank statement or your bank account and watch where the money's going and start writing down where you're spending all month long. And then when you realize you're spending, I don't know, $200 on coffee, you're like, you, like you don't know how much you're spending until you write it down. And you're like, I'm spending what? And you're like, I'm not doing that. Um, and then, and then you can start to set goals and you say, I actually want to be able to save $200 a month. I want to be able to save $500 a month. How am I going to get there? I'm going to cut back on this. I'm going to cut back on that. Oh my gosh, I'm spending that much on gas. I'm spending that much on that car payment. I'm spending that much on what? And you can start to shift your budget around to force yourself into uh, meeting a budget. Now, easier said than done, right? Mm -hmm. Big time easier said than done. Yeah especially if your finances are up in the air and they're in limbo. But you can, if you keep chipping away long enough, you will be able to push yourself into the budget that you want. And I watched one of our mutual friends, Brian Huynh, do this at like 18, 19 years old. So smart. I remember we're like 18. I'm like in high school. You're 19. He was working for a, a dental hygienist. And I, he got this job and... um one day he just looks, you know, I'm just like, he's like, are you saving money? I'm like, well, yeah, kind of, you know, I got like, you know, 150 bucks in the bank. He's like, what? 150 bucks. And I was like, well, how much you got in the bank? He's like, I saved 30,000. I'm like, what? <laughs> We're 19, dude. How'd you save 30,000? What'd you do? You know? And he's like, well, I eat rice, dude. You know, I eat, I eat simple things. I don't spend you're spending, you know, five dollars on that meal and ten dollars on that meal, and you're you're you bought that shirt and you did that thing, you bought that those shoes, and you're just burning up your money, dude. Why, you know? And that like that like hit me square between the eyes. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's he's living way below his means. Mm -hmm. He he's he's having a dollar meal 
when he could be having a $10 meal, but he chooses not to, and he puts the money away. And he was driving a nicer car than me, and he had nicer shoes than me, and he, he still, because he would take 40 bucks from that 30000 and he'd go buy some sweet shoes, you know? Every once in a while, he'd spoil himself, you know? Brian had some really nice stuff. And now we know he owns multiple properties and he's killing it, you know, because yes, yes. um, he's still budgeting. Mm -hmm. And but the point being is, you can you can you can force yourself into it if you want to. It's up to you. You got to budget your cash. I make this much a month. Where is all that money going? Mm -hmm. And you decide where that money's going. And if you don't manage it, and you say you're gonna, what man? starts to build a tower before sitting down to make sure he knows the cost. Um, it's it's a it's funny that you mentioned Brian because I remember when he hit me square between the eyes. We were like going to have I think it was like after the well going to eat something, and uh, he's like, hey, how, "How much do you make?" And uh, I don't know that he asked me that directly, but I somehow we got on the topic and I shared him like I was at Pepsi. I was I'm doing well, like I'm not thinking about money, and he's like, "Oh wow!" He's like, "How much debt do you have?" And I told him, and his eyes lit up, and he just lit me up. He's like, how do you have so much debt? You make how much money you have? Debt? And you're supposed to be this godly man serving in the church. Wow. And he's like, how are you so undisciplined? Like, I mean, I talked to him about this. He's like, I said all that? I was like, yeah, man. And it hit me hard. I'm like, man, I, I want to be this godly man, but I can't even be disciplined with my finances. I'm, the Lord has entrusted me with this job and allowed me to, to earn this income. And I'm just blowing it on stuff that I don't even remember. I don't even know where the money's going. And and I was like, man, this is not how I want to be. I, I want to be a husband that can provide and, and take care of his kids and not have to be the dad that says no all the time. And, and so it really got me thinking about how I can better use my finances. And, and does getting on a budget, is it hard? Is it difficult? Is it challenging? Yes. It, and it, it sucks sometimes. And but... Again, thinking about the long term as a young man, I would challenge you. Like, you can, yeah, you can go buy the fresh Jordans. You can go do what you want to do, but that's just going to set you back that much more from achieving your goals, mm -hmm. or whatever those may be. And maybe, maybe you don't want to have the the multi million dollar house. You just want to have a, a nice little spot, regardless of what your goal is. Every time you you swipe that card, and you don't think about where that money is going. You're just setting yourself back that much further. And so as a young guy, if you can be disciplined with your finances, man, you can bless your family. Man, you can leave, like the scripture talks about, leave an inheritance to your children's mm -hmm. children. Like that that type of thinking is, I think that's biblical thinking. That's mm -hmm. preparing to be a godly man, uh, wanting to be someone who is a good steward of what God has entrusted them with. Uh, and if, if maybe your budget's tight, you, you don't make enough money to even meet your bills. Again, go get another, go make more money. Yeah. Go, go increase your skills so that you can earn more. Don't wait for someone to give it to you. Don't wait for the company to, to shift and to be able to have more money to pay you. If you're not making enough, go get another job to where you can make enough. Totally. You, there's, you can, there's so many ways to make money. Uber Eats, you can DoorDash, you can do all these jobs that where all the other guys who are wasting their money, spending yep. money to go buy food. You can go earn that money and conserve your, your, your resources uh, in a way that would help prepare you for the future. Learn to, to manage your money. It's such a, I think it's an undervalued uh, principle that's taught or not taught to, um, to young men. Especially when it's going to control your whole life. It's gonna, you're going to be chained to it. And so it's like you have to learn this young. Two things that I wish I would have done, Aaron, were 18, 19, 20. Number one, saved enough money to put a down payment on any piece of property. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. And don't, don't, don't rent the apartment. Buy the apartment. You know, it doesn't take a lot of money to do that. If it takes, if the, if the apartment, I don't know, is, you know, Hundred fifty, two hundred thousand. All you need to save is probably ten to twenty thousand dollars, and you can buy that thing, and then you just make payment to it. A lot. I didn't know that, dude. I didn't buy my first house until I was like twenty nine or thirty, something like this. And Mark Finnegan's the one who told me. You know, Steve Olbermann told me, save ten grand, and you can buy a house. What? I'm like, well, I could save, I think, five hundred to a thousand dollars, I think, a month if I tighten up my budget. So that means I could probably buy a house in a year. And uh, he's like, yeah, you can. I'm like, really? And so I said, all right, I'm going to do it. But see, if somebody had told me to do that when I was younger, um, because I don't have any bill, I don't have anything to spend money on. I literally could have taken all the cash 
of my 18, 19, 20, 21 year old self and just put it away and live off of beans and rice. And then all of a sudden, boom, I would have a property, number one. Number two, I would have invested 50 to $100 in the S&P 500 in the stock market. S&P 500 is the top 500 companies in America and it's just a stock that you can buy and you put a little bit of that money away and that will grow so fast and in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you'll have a million bucks just sitting there in the stock market, set, sitting back saying how in the world this happened. Compound interest and investing is so important and uh, I would encourage any young person. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm trying to figure out ways even how to get my kids to start buying stock even now and, uh, and to start putting it in because time is your friend in investing. And the less time you have, the more difficult it is, the more time you have, the more opportunity you have. Um, this is, uh, a lot of people don't want to talk about these things. A lot of people want to just, just want to drone this out, but I'm telling you, it's sad how much it attacks us every single day. And I'm so thankful old men pulled me aside and said something. I'm not a wizard at these things, but it's just the little that help that I have received is like paid unbelievable uh, dividends into my life. So, I mean, I, I know there's some people that will say like, oh, it's not all about money, bro. You know, it's not all about, you know, having things. And, and I, I get it. Trust me. I understand like, yeah, life does not consist of the, uh, the abundance of things that you have. I, I get that idea, but it, it does make things easier practically as a man in the world when you have the resources to be able to take care of, of your needs. And, and so, yeah, it's not all about money. It's not all about, you know, going after you know, the, the nice shiny things. And, and that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about getting a bunch of money so you can have cool things and nice things, but taking care of your responsibilities. And when you can produce resources that are able to uh, be able to take care of your, your needs, it just, it makes things so much smoother in a lot of ways. Uh, it, a sad statistic is, you know, when you look at divorces, uh, households that break up, um, it's, it's a lot of times is due to finances. Uh, it's, that's one of the biggest issues is. within relationships is finances. And if you as a young man can get that under control, it's the number one reason for divorce in this day and age. And it's, it's, it's sad. Like as a young man, if you can be disciplined and learn to manage your money, you can save yourself all of that turmoil and, and, and problems that come with not having good financial management in the future and so we're not saying to, that it's you, not about being rich exactly it's about being stable and being able to take care of yourself bear your own burdens like don't be a burden to your brother to your right or to your left be able to take care of yourself like yes. if you can take care of yourself and every man was able to take care of themselves and their families we'd be all right we, we wouldn't have to lean on the next person we wouldn't have to go into debt and then be you know working that dead-end job just to try to get up out of that debt it's just manage your money as a young man and it'll save yourself a lot of heartache and headaches one more kicker we'll move on to the next one it, you know if you go back i've done this before and it's it's troubling. <laughs> Traumatizing. If you calculate, whenever you first got your first job and you calculate every year how much you made oh, yeah. until now, and you look at how much money you've made over the last 20 years, 25 years, you're like, what, what did I spend all that money on? Because you're like, what in the world do I have? You, it just burned up on who knows what. And that is why writing down what we spend is so important because you don't know what you're spending. It's just literally like we're just throwing money into a pocket with holes in it. It's just, it's flying out. You don't even know where it's going. And, uh, there is no class in high school on finance. I had a semester of economics. Like, mm -hmm. and even that was poorly taught. Like I, yeah. I don't even remember it. There's no budgeting. There's no Dave Ramsey, you know, financial piece in there. Not even close, yeah. you know? Anyways, recommend that course to anybody listening. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's helpful to get people, especially who have no discipline in their finances, to be able to do so. And Super helpful. Yeah. It's, it's not a, it's, it's just, a, again, going back to the other points. It's a discipline. It's being consistent. Uh, it's understanding your purpose, thinking long term. But managing your money is a, is a very wise counsel to receive from as a young man. Number six is control your emotions or practice practicing building self-control which is one of the fruits of the spirit mm. um and men men are instructed all the time um 
you know, to be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, to not deal harshly with your wives. Um, um, do not provoke your children to wrath, to anger. But, you know, there, there's a lot of instruction to man to controlling uh, their own emotions. And um, because we actually have the ability to do so, we have testosterone flowing through our veins, mm -hmm. and which enables us to have a bit more control over our emotions. Um, we're not flooded with estrogen. Um, we have testosterone, and our cycle basically repeats every 24 hours or so. So we, uh, we have an opportunity to correct every single day. And, um, and, and, and you can train a man to really be able to discipline his mind and emotions. This is why they're great for war. Um, to be able to set the mind steady and to go into war um, over the centuries as, as men have done in the past. But practicing self-control really bleeds into anger, lust, um, and having not, not being able to can have self-control can really cause a lot of damage to life very, very quickly. Mm. If we're prone and quick to anger, if we're prone and quick to lust, um, or have problems with women, have problems with other men, other people, um, we're going to tear down our own lives. Yeah, it's it's just such a um, overall uh, ability that every godly man needs to put in place. Whether it's regard to your your words, like James talks about, like taming the tongue. That's mm. that's having control over the things that you say, um, taking every thought captive. We talked about already. That's that's allowing your mind to be under control. Like mm. you are exercising discipline. It's funny sometimes my kids will say like, "Well, you know, I just I just wanted to, so I had to." And I have to remind them like, "No, you still control what you do. Sure. Like you make the decision." And and. I don't know where this idea comes from, but I think a lot of people have this like led by their feelings type of idea. Like, well, I just feel like I feel like I want that food, so I'm just gonna go eat that food. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, have self control. Like, mm -hmm. you still make the decision. Yes. And this is one of the um, the biblical teachings that I, I love that you share about fasting. Mm -hmm. Like the the practical application of it. Yeah, there's a spiritual component, but practically, when you fast, you are you are literally telling your body. Like your no. feelings, your emotions, you're yeah. saying, no, I am not going to feed you. Yes. And that's a discipline that, that you can uh, practically exercise so that you have self-control over other areas of your life. It becomes more accessible to you. Yeah. And it, it, it again, it helps so much in life. If you can, there, there's just so much coming at you in life already. I mean, you got your own flesh, you got the world coming at you, you got spiritual warfare coming at you, you got people around you you know, who, who, you know, cannot control their emotions and are trying to tear you down. And so you, you've got to navigate this and you've got to work on disciplining your own emotions and keeping your cool, you know, keeping your cool is so important. You know, you just think about the guy who, you know, some dude comes and like cuts him off and slams on his brakes and then, you know, comes up on the side and wants to like fight him. And the dude's just like, do, do, do. like I'm not I'm not bothered by you dude I'm not letting you like come into my life and destroy my life I got a family and kids I got no time for you I don't, actually don't even see you on the freeway crank up the classical music I'm just enjoying my ride thank you very much and the guy gets so angry that you're not paying any attention and he just speeds off but think about the dude who loses his mind and pulls over and says get out of the car they end up fighting on the side of the road and, and then you hit him and he falls back and he hits his head on the concrete and he dies. And then you, you go to prison because you, you, you hit, you let someone take over your life. I've had to learn this, Aaron. Like I am that guy, dude. I, I want to like, my, my, mo my passion, dude, was just, you know, just like football, dude. Like, you know, someone hit me, dude. And I'd be like, I'm going to kill you, dude, on the field. Like. I would laser focus on that dude. Like, I only weigh 150, 160 pounds, but I'm going to throw every pound into you before the game's over. You will die because you, you know, this laser focus. Like, I needed to punish him. And um, I hate that about myself, you know? And I've had to work really hard, you know, to, 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 to lengthen my fuse. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had brothers hold me accountable for this, you know, just like, well, how long can you hold your fuse? You know, can you do five minutes? Can you do 10 minutes? You know, like how, how long does that fuse go? And that, that was a challenge for me because I would see things trigger me, you know, whether it's my childhood or whatever's going on. But the fruit of the spirit, we have almighty God living in us. Mm -hmm. 
the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And we have the power to self-control and meekness as Moses had. And, and I understand brothers, sometimes dude, something's getting at you and it's just like, I'm about to lose my mind right now. You better stop that. I'm going to lose it on you, you know? But I'm telling you, if you even lengthen the fuse by one second each time, it's like, I got 10 seconds that time, and tomorrow I'm going to get 11, and the next day I'm going to get 12 seconds. If you've got to watch your clock, dude, just like wa watch your watch. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Just, just pray, God help me. Lengthen this fuse, you know? Same thing with lust, you know? It's like, we, 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 we look upon the woman with lust, and it's like I mean, the brothers, you know, trying to hold each other accountable on these things. But it's like the eye looks at the woman and wants to lust. And if you can discipline your mind, even for one second to say, I'm going to turn away. You know, Job says, I made a covenant with my eyes, you know, not to look upon a woman with lust. Like I'm going to try to turn away and discipline. I'm going to try to turn away and discipline by the will of God, by the spirit of God, by the power of God. I'm going to take steps of faith to do that. You'll watch that all of a sudden it's like, oh, that girl was like a, a four or five in your mind. And for some reason you still wanted to look at her. But all of a sudden the 10 pops up the next day and you're like, you look and it's like somehow you have strength and power to turn away because you've been disciplining yourself, controlling your emotion in Christ and being able to get yourself away from those things. Um, you know, controlling emotion is, is so important in this society because the man has to anchor his family. If the man is a mess, he's crying every day and he, he, he's, he's losing his mind over everything and he's burning the house down and he's ripping the place apart. And he's, I mean, I mean, we need a captain who, who can stay steady in the storm when everybody on the boat is ready to jump off and losing their mind and the storm's coming. He's like, no, no, full speed ahead, steady. Everything's going to be fine focus you know we we need a man to do that and it's not easy in this society but brothers you can do it you will do it in christ Amen. and uh, we struggle with you mm -hmm. and uh but you can do it yeah and uh, again this whole talk is is towards young men right like as a young man the we talked about it before that the stakes like there's there's not much responsibility you have as a young man you take care of yourself you manage get these things in order and if you can if you can learn this self-discipline, like while the stakes are low, mm. when the stakes are high, the, the, the discipline that you will need in those higher stake situations, the, you're, you're planting seeds now for that to, to give fruit in the, in the later seasons of life. The, being able to... So good. You don't think that... Sometimes the, the idea comes into the mind of young men. I know I had it for a, a second, like, oh, well, when I get married, oh, that, that whole lust problem thing, it's, it's just, it's going out the window. Yeah. Like, who are you fully? Yeah, <laughs> Only yeah. yourself. Yeah. Because uh, it, it, it never goes away. But you exercise discipline as a, as a single man, as a young man. Then when you're married, you have discipline. That's right. You, you've already learned. You've already challenged yourself. And the stakes are a lot higher when, if you were to fall than if they were when you're a young man, not to say that it's, it's acceptable to fall as a young man, but to exercise discipline as a young man so that you can take that into the future, whatever scenario and situation you find yourself in. And that's not just regard to, to lust, but with your anger. Mm -hmm. Like as a young man, if you, can, if you can control your anger, then you're not going to be the angry dad. That's right. You're not going to be the angry husband. If you learn to get these things under control now as a, as a young man, uh, that will be for your benefit and for the benefit of others around you. You can be a protector uh, of women and children rather than an instigator of, of bad towards mm. men or women and children. So as a young man, develop self-control in all aspects of your life because the stakes will only get higher as time yes. goes on. Uh, you think it's, it's dif difficult to deal with your family at the holidays as a, as a young man? Guess what? When you get married, you get a whole nother set of parents yeah. and in-laws. So, you have two families now. Oh, if, you I love it. if you weren't able to learn discipline with your family, what makes you think that you're going to be more disciplined with the next family, mm -hmm. with another family, or with your family? Uh, so I just encourage and, and challenge young men to, to seek to be disciplined in all areas of mm -hmm. your life. And, and mm -hmm. having the brothers around you is helpful, and it can be a, a great tool to, to develop accountability so that you can be disciplined mm -hmm. over your life. Yeah, be angry and do not sin. It's okay to be angry. It's just keep that anger under control mm -hmm. and do not let it turn into sin. 
It's okay to behold beauty, mm -hmm. but don't let that beauty beholding turn into lust. We've got to control that. And that's the thing. You can take baby steps in your own life to, to um, govern that. And I would even add that the pinnacle of this controlling of emotion or being able to navigate it when you're older, and we written it down in our notes, is this forgiveness and grace moment. Mm -hmm. Controlling ourselves and emotions to a place of forgiveness and grace. Because one of the hardest things emotionally probably to do is to forgive someone mm -hmm. and then to give them grace. And that only comes from the Lord. And we have to be experiencing it in Him as we experience his emotion as we experience what he does for us he should be angry against us he should he should turn us away and he should not but he should not welcome us back but instead he pours forgiveness on us as we experience that in our relationship with him it enables us to have a change of emotion and pour forgiveness on our spouse pour forgiveness on our coworker pour forgiveness on our family member or our friend whatever it may be and then even take it a step further and pour grace upon them. And when you can control emotion to that degree where you can tell yourself and encourage yourself in the Lord to be able to give forgiveness over and over again and then go beyond that and give grace over and over again, you've hit the jackpot in relationships, really. You've hit the jackpot emotionally if you can pour forgiveness and grace. That's the gospel, right? A hundred percent. And we want to always remember the gospel and all that we do, like that we need it just as much as, as they do. Yes. And that forgiveness, um, and, and don't get me wrong, I know there's situations where there's people who have been wronged and, and you are maybe justified in wanting to hold a grudge, but forgiveness is, is uh, um, something that we are required to do because we have received forgiveness from God. God is completely uh, innocent and, and we have violated so many times against him, but yet he still pours forgiveness on us. And in, in those situations on the earth where we extend forgiveness, that forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean that you have to trust that individual, mm. but that you release them uh, from that and you forgive them and you allow yourself to show grace upon them, to, to bless them. Uh, I remember hearing someone say, like, the, the way that you know you forgive someone is when you're able to bless them. Mm. Uh, so if you if you can't bless them, uh, wow. then maybe you haven't forgiven them wow. fully. Uh, so so being a person of forgiveness, like you mentioned, Josh, is, um, is paramount to relationships. You want to be a, a desirable man for your spouse? Uh, start developing these traits so that you are, are someone who is forgiving, who's gracious, who's mm. kind, uh, that people want to be around. They, they want, they, they are begging you to be around because mm. they know that uh, you're a safe person. You're going to be a person that is, is willing to forgive, is willing to show grace, who's kind, who's humble, and is, is capable of being uh, the man that God called them to be. So good. We say we move on to number seven. Uh, we have be resilient and, um, Number seven of top 10 things we think young guys should know, uh, being resilient. You know, life's going to have a lot of setbacks and you got to learn to press through them. Um, this is, if you don't realize up front, if for some reason, young people, including myself, I remember this, I just thought that when I attempt something, it's going to work. Hmm. I just always thought that it's like, if I do it, it's going to work. And then it doesn't work and you're so let down and you're so depressed and you're disappointed and you're like, why isn't this working? And what you don't realize in life is that nothing ever works until you have probably like three or four failures, sometimes five to 10 failures on the road to success. And you must be resilient in anything from I don't know, something as simple as um, building a fence at your house. Maybe you don't think that's simple, but you know, it's like, if you think that you're just gonna buy wood, put it in the ground and nail it up, and it's just gonna be done in like two hours, you have, you, th that's the jackpot. What's going to happen, and again, this is only through trial and error, is you're going to go to buy the wood and it's not going to be available. Mm. And then you're going to go to find the nails that you thought and you're going to get the wrong size. And then you go to, you know, plug in the, uh, you know, the compressor, you know, or the nail gun or you, your hammer or whatever it may be. And something's not working right. 
And then you finally, after two hours of trying to set everything up, you start the process and then you accidentally nail your finger and it's bleeding and now you have to go repair it. And now it hurts while you're working. And then all of a sudden you realize you burnt up, you know, half the day and it's lunchtime. And so it's like, I got to go eat something and I'm starving. Like I can't do this. And then you keep chipping away and you keep pushing. You must be resilient and you keep pushing and you finally get half the fence done. And you're like, okay, I got half of it done. And then tomorrow you're going to start up again. You got to get everything set up. You think everything's going to run smooth again and it's not. You're going to have one or two problems again that day and you have to plan for those problems to happen. So every single project, every single path, every single job, every single relationship, every single business opportunity, every single, every single thing in life does not work out smooth. Never believe that. Mm -mm. Never believe that. You must plan for five to 10 problems. Um, I thought the church plant was going to go so smooth and everything was going to be great. We're going to launch this thing. Everything's just going to fire and just go off. I had no clue. I, so I projected that, let's just say I was going to have on level 10, like problems. It was level 99. <laughs> okay. Not even close to the projection that I thought. And you must be resilient. You must just keep, what is resilience? You must just keep chipping away. Just keep eating one bite at the time of the elephant and you eventually eat the whole elephant. You just keep chipping away a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. Resilience, just keep chipping away and you will get through to the other side. Yeah, I, I love that. It's, you know, um, we talked about before making a plan. Um, I think as you, you make a plan, like the scripture says, like, does a man make plans to go to war without considering if he has the resources to, to win? Or does a man go to build a, a house without making sure that he has the resources? When you make a plan, um, and you referenced that speaking about Jesus, counting the cost for being a disciple of Jesus, but on a practical way, making that plan helps you to persevere through the obstacles because you know what the goal is if you don't have a plan and you start to get all these obstacles it's like ah oh, well maybe i'm just not supposed to do this thing or you know i just you know or maybe god doesn't want me to you know he's closing every single door but if you have a plan you prayed about it you understood what you were trying to accomplish then you just overcome those obstacles and and, and that you persevere through the storms and and not everything is going to work out perfectly and i'm so glad that you said that because i think there's a lot of uh, believers who think that, you know, well, you know, if, if I'm a believer, then everything that I touch is going to turn to gold. Everything that I do is going to be perfect. Every, yep. every job interview I go on, I'm going to get because, you know, the Lord is with me. And yes, the Lord is with you. Mm -hmm. um, but this world is not as it, is, it was intended to be. Like there's sin. There, it's been affected by sin. And there's a lot of things that don't work out. The rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. Like right. it, it's going to rain on Christians and non-believers. It's, it's going to rain on us all. And we have to be persistent and overcome in, in times of difficulty, trusting that the Lord will see you through. And if he does close the door and direct you in a different area, yay and amen. You be obedient to what God has called you to. Um, but if he doesn't and he allows you to continue to persist, man, those times where I've overcome obstacles, Achieving the goal has been so much more satisfying when you get that fence built and your fingers are all bloody uh, Man, it, it you know every time you look at that fence what it took to make that fence yep. work and you appreciate it that much more And you appreciate the other fences that all the other guys have built before you and you develop a respect and an appreciation for the world around you Your brothers in Christ you're your, the people that just live around you and it's a it's, it's a beautiful thing when you endure and overcome and it, it just helps to build a greater appreciation for the things that you are able to enjoy. And if you built a second fence, mm. it would be faster and better. And if you built the third fence, because what you're doing is learning from all of your failures and mistakes and it just gets better and better and better. What people miss is that the road to success is only made by learning from all of the failures and getting better. So, if you calculate that the road to success has no failures on it, the f when, as soon as you get a failure, you're going to say it didn't work. Mm -hmm. But what you don't realize is that's step one to succeeding. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to do the first one. And when you do the first one, you see all of your mistakes. Then you attempt the second one. And you take all of the mistakes of the first one and you apply it to the second path and it becomes easier and better. 
And then after you do the first and second, you take all the failures of one and two and you apply it to three and you're even better. Mm -hmm. Business one that you built is going to be a failure. If it wins, you, 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 dude, (laughs) that's favor upon favor. Mm -hmm. But even if you got favor upon favor, you could build business number two, probably even better because you figured out how to do it in business one. But if you fail business one, Business two, you're not going to do all this fair. Business three is going to be better. Business four is going to be better. Steve Jobs went bankrupt like two times, I think, before scaling this thing to trillions of dollars. Amazon lost money for years. Like 10 years, right? 10 years before they made a profit. So this is what people don't understand is that the process of success is failures along the way. And the only way to get there is you have to fail. So plan on failing first, learn from those failures, do it again, learn from those failures, do it again, learn from those failures, do it again. And that's how you reach success. It may take 10 failures before you get the success. But if you stop at the first failure or the second failure, then you will never reach success. And this is why resilience is so important for every man. And I'm talking about from replacing the drain in your sink, you know, to, um, you know, to finding the good job opportunity, you know, to uh, loving and serving your wife, um, to trying to learn and understand your kids, um, to even walking with the Lord. You have so many failures in walking with Jesus along the way. You're going to sin and fail so many times. That's okay. Don't worry. That's what, that's what the gospel's for. Keep walking with him, keep running with him, and you're going to succeed. And again, I didn't know this as a kid. I didn't know this. I thought, I was just going to get up and it it was going to be a grand slam. And that's not the way it works, man. It's like, now I know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I have to be careful when I say this, but I think that I could potentially do anything if I set my mind to it. Because what I would do is I just say, I'm going to decide I'm going to climb Mount Everest. I may not do it the first time, but I'll do it the 10th time. And I'm going to start training. And this is what it takes to train to get there. And if I can do this many days this year, I'll attempt it. If I can't, I'll try it next year. And you just keep trying it until you ultimately get it. And you will just plan on failing many times through, but eventually you will get there. And that is how these these incredible sports players, businessmen, um, just people in life, you know, it, it, they just they just keep going. You know, it, this is this is how it works. Consistent resilience. Yeah, it's it's what it takes, man. And, and you know, to to try after failure, I mean, it's risky. You've already experienced failure. You you know what potentially is ahead of you. You have to to count that risk and just to continue to push push forward. I, I think that's what makes a man. Like you you have to just man up. Like I'm gonna do this thing. I am gonna achieve. I am gonna accomplish. And I, I don't think it's so far fetched to to make that statement. Like. I will do whatever I want to do. Like that's, that's the right mentality. I think that yeah. we should have, like, I am going to accomplish, I am going to achieve. I think there's too many uh, negative voices that would, would say like, oh, he's totally. never going to make it. Oh, why would you even try that? Mount totally. Everest, putting up a fence. Why don't you just hire somebody? Why don't you just, no, this is what I've set my mind to. This is what I believe. And I'm going to accomplish this. Uh, I may have to ask for help. I may fail. I may need some assistance, but I am going to achieve this thing. And it's, it's a, a very bold move to take, but I think that's, that's the making of a man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that while that doesn't ensure that we accomplish everything in life, what it does ensure is that you're going to accomplish a lot in life. Mm-hmm. Because while some things won't work, other things are fully going to work. Yep. And you're going to do way more than the majority of people in the society because most people sit in the mud and they do say, I just can't do it. I'm not going to make it, you know, and I can't, all the reasons, all the excuses, but resilience and discipline and consistency is so, um, underrated and it needs to be given more attention to. You can accomplish so much so quickly. If you just keep chipping away, it's the ant, it's the ant, just a little, little bit of work at a time. And they find themselves, building and digging and doing so much um number eight we got build good relationships um 
Number eight on the 10 things that we think every young man should have is build good relationships. Yes, the sum of a person is basically the five or 10 closest people to them. That is who you are. 10 closest people to you, that is who you are. So you want to find good friendships, good relationships, good people, make those connections with them and uh, invest time in those relationships that you want. <clears throat> and uh, go out of your way to build those good friendships. I mean, we need it so bad in this society. Sad that people are alone. So sad. Uh, friendships are so crucial and so important. And um, what is life uh, without... Life is basically relationships. That's all it is. And um, at this point in life, I mean, I'm finding it more than ever as I just want to invest and hang out with the people that I really love and the people that really stir me and build me and boost me to push on in life and uh, what is life without good friendships and relationships. Even you got all the money in the world, you got all the sex, success, sex, you got all the power, you got, yeah, all the drug, sex and rock and roll, you got all the things. What is it without real friendship? Yeah. It's the saddest thing when you hear these like superstars, movie stars, rock stars, and they just feel like they're alone like they have nobody they don't have any real relationship yeah, like nobody really likes them or nobody really loves them i was like how like that's just so sad mm -hmm. and even if you're not a rock star like you just by yourself that's just it doesn't seem like an enjoyable experience i mean you were talking about it from the pulpit you know the the tv show alone with those people who just they they compete in this competition if you haven't seen the show like there's 10 participants that are dropped in this remote wilderness and and they're separate they're they're filming themselves they're all alone and it's last man standing or last woman standing and as they go through it the longer they're out there by themselves they start to just get into their mind they may have the skills to be out there for mm. a long time mm -hmm. but mentally they just can't hack it they mm -hmm. just can't handle like the old stuff starts coming up just being by yourself man is it is not good for man to be alone mm, that's right and and we need to to exist in community so having like some of my greatest times in life are just because of the relationships that the Lord has allowed me to develop over the years my guys being with my wife and my kids like it's it's such a uh, an enjoyable experience to have these relationships but it takes time to develop those yes. relationships like i i try to encourage people and especially in the church if you're new you're trying to get plugged in trying to find your spot like put yourself out there a little bit it's a, it's a little bit of a risk you know someone invites you hey we're going to go over to this pizza spot you want to come it could be easy to be like ah oh, no i got you know i got to do this thing right. i gotta wash my clothes i gotta clean the car just go mm -hmm. you never know what relationships will form just True. just being there you talked about it the other day when we were hanging out of the power of presence just just mm -hmm. being with mm -hmm. people how valuable that is and knitting people together especially in the body of christ people that will encourage you and build you up and want to see you do well in life it's mm -hmm. uh, it's so valuable there's so many the next generation is not connecting with people they connect online but they're like don't know how to connect with people. Everybody knows how to connect with a screen, but nobody knows how to interact face to face. And if that's you listening, you have to start taking risks and putting yourself out there. The only way to grow in building friendships is by taking risks to do so and you're going to fail. So it's like introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Josh. What's your name? Oh, Aaron, nice to meet you. You know, so what do you like to do for fun? You know, um, you, you, you need to start digging into awkward conversation in order to become unawkward at conversation. And the more you throw yourself into it and the more you talk with people, the better that you become at it. Now, and that is the beginning to a friendship now, isn't it? Now, for those of you who already have old friendships you should probably try to maintain those old good friendships, reach back out and try to maintain those if you have them <clears throat> because they are a treasure. I'm telling you, they are a treasure. If you have gold and a friendship around you, take care of that friendship, nurture that friendship. How do you do that? You invite each other over to each other's house. You go to meals together. You encourage each other. You pray for each other. Be generous to each other. Go out of your way to do all the things. If that person died today, what would you wish you would have done? Do all of those things. Uh, for you young people who don't have a lot of friends yet, I'm telling you, put yourself out there. You initiate. Be awkward. Figure it out. Just start the conversation. 
and keep trying to push through. Aaron, what are the what are the four things uh, for conversation? Yeah, it's a, uh, a buddy of mine who's in a sales master he uh, he was on the sales floor and they taught him this acronym form f-o-r-m so they correlate to four questions that you can uh, use to develop a relationship or a rapport with the customer but you can do it with a friend first one f family you can ask questions about the family oh so do you have any brothers and sisters uh, does your family live close by just get them people like to talk about themselves you get them talking about themselves everyone has family and if they not that's another conversation well where you don't have any family how'd you grow up um, the O is occupation. What, what do you do for work? Especially, we just talked about work. Hopefully, You're in school. What do you do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, what's your occupation? What keeps you occupied with life? And it's a it's a an easy question that can go in a number of different ways. Uh, R recreation. What do you like to do for fun? Mm. Like what 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 drives you? Like what hobbies do you have? You play sports? You watch the game last week? Mm -hmm. Did you? Whatever. Recreation is R. Uh, and then the M is motivation. Like. Well, why are you here? What, what what brought you to church? Or why why did you start coming to this gym? Or, or why did you start? You know why why do you like this restaurant so much? Whatever. Mm -hmm. What's your motivation? Like it, these four letters uh, represent questions that can be used to stimulate small talk and that can help to form relationships. Mm -hmm. And especially in the church, uh, a, a simple question that I always encourage people to ask is, "How can I pray for you?" Mm. You'd be surprised how much impact that has you never know what that person's going right. through you don't know what they're facing and then you taking the time to, to pray for them to talk to almighty god on be on their behalf uh is 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 a is a big deal for a lot of people to pray for them and then even after the fact you see them the following sunday hey man i've been praying for your mom and, and their situation how's things going mm -hmm. uh showing that you care now you have a connection with that person you're starting to develop friendships and and relationships develop over time it's a uh, it's, it's something that we all need. We all need to have these relationships and connection points. I think two things that deepen a friendship very quickly, um, and will continue to deepen that friendship long-term, are experiences mm -hmm. together, and um, basically sharing vulnerable places in areas in your life. So experiences are so important, you know? And when, when you have an experience... You can invite somebody to something like, hey, man, you want to you go to the beach? You know, you want to go in, you want to go surfing? You want to go goof off? You want to go, go on a hike together? You want to go running? You want to go and ride bikes? I don't know. You want to go on a walk? You want to go to a concert? You want to go to, I don't know. You know, you want to go camping? You know, you want to go man retreat, right? Yeah. I don't know, whatever the things are, but if you can, if you can get somebody to go do something, especially men, if you can get somebody to go do something with you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to this car show this weekend. You want to come check it out? And you go and do something together that deepens the relationship, the friendship. Again, this is friendship 101, but again, we got to map this out. People don't understand it. Yeah. Um, go, go see a movie together. Go do something together to have something to do. Go have a meal together. Um, and then second is within those, with, within those hangout times, the moment when the friendship changes from just small talk and goofing off is when somebody shares something that's vulnerable. And it's like, you know, man, I've been going through this with my dad, you know, I've been going through, you know, this happened to me at work, you know, and it's really bothering me or whatever. Or you share uh, that that may be something sad that's going on in life, something that you're struggling through and working through. But again, there's an emotional, deeper connection there that takes place that develops real friendship. So we're vulnerable and vulnerability can also be on a celebratory side as well, where we're like, we share something really cool that's happened to us in life that maybe we wouldn't share with that person because it's kind of a, a special thing in my life. But dude, I, I got, I got a raise, you know, like I can't believe it. Like it worked out and like, I'm doing better. And like, and he gets to celebrate with you. And the, these are the moments when we're, when we're vulnerable about personal information on the inside, we trust this person enough to start sharing something. We start taking down the fence a little bit. That's when the relationship really starts to grow. You look at people you're best friends with, you've been friends with for 20 years, Again, you've done lots of experiences together. You have uh, shared lots of personal things with them, and that's what's knit your hearts together. Yeah, and, and a lot of people want to jump to that second spot. I just want someone I can confide in and trust. Sure. And can, it's like, that doesn't just happen. No. Like, first time you're shaking hands on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Like, you need to spend time with each other. Like, and I would say it's unwise even to, to do it that early in their friendship yeah. or relationship. But to have those experiences over time, and you 
many have watched the podcast with the brothers who are on here and we're cracking jokes and yeah. remembering the old times it's because we've had experiences together totally. and over time those experiences have led it to deeper and deeper relationships to where those conversations aren't awkward it's mm -hmm. like hey man I, I need you to be praying for me about this situation i got this job opportunity or you know i'm, I'm pursuing this this girl i'm thinking about marrying her what do you got what do you think like that doesn't just happen uh, at, at that first meeting. It's it's taking time to invest. You have to sacrifice. Maybe you wanted to go do X, Y, and Z, but you know what? Instead, you you made the decision to be with that person. Um, maybe you don't like you know fishing, but the the buddy invited you to go fishing. You're like, you know what? I'm just gonna go. He I likes hang it. with them. Yeah, I'm just gonna be chilling side by side, and we're just gonna catch up. Uh, and and making that sacrifice, you'll be surprised how how much that that. Uh, deepens that relationship yeah it's so important um, this is we said earlier you know that you know the sum of a man is the five closest relationships to him and so you know you really want to choose your friends wisely and um, you know friends that are poisoning you or pulling you away from God and destroying your life you know that's those are also ones that you want to get away from and uh, those that are encouraging you and strengthening you or, you know, they just you just have a lot of history with them. And they're just a great person and you, you want them in your life. Um, invest in people. I don't think we do this enough in this day and age. You know, it's it's uh, cherish those relationships, show show a lot, show high level hospitality yes. to one another, outdo one another and showing honor. Mm. Bless each other. You know, it's OK to do that with your brothers, with your friends. And uh, you'll be surprised uh, how encouraged people are. You don't know even that some of your friends are, are just hurting, you know, or they're going through something sometimes. And so um, a small, nice gesture, you know, can go a long way. Yeah. And encourage your brothers, build them up. Let, sometimes just let you, I know guys aren't so emotional, but like, hey man, I just want to let you know I was proud of you. I seen that you've been working that job and I know it sucks, but... I'm, I'm just really encouraged to, to see mm -hmm. you continue to push on or you've been putting away money. I know you've been, you haven't been going out to eat with mm -hmm. us or, or I remember uh, Daniel when he uh, left the fire department to pursue paramedic and he, yeah. he was on tough times, but he right. would just be at the, the in and out table with no food, just with his little index card, he just wanted to hang out, but he's his little index yeah. card steady yeah. and we would give him a hard time, but he just, he wanted to be in the fellowship yes. and he had sacrificed and it, it's encouraging for him to hear a word like, Hey man, I, I just, I'm really good grateful to be able to stand by and watch what God has done with your life. Now you have a beautiful family, a home, uh, uh, you're, you're set up and you're able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. It just mm -hmm. it makes me really excited to see what the Lord has in store for your future. Encourage the brothers around you. Uh, and, and we're talking to young men, um, but men in general, but especially young men, another form of relationships is with the, the sisters in the church. Mm. Like I, I want to caution and encourage you. The scripture is clear treat the younger women as sisters mm. like you don't have to i know we want young men want those relationships you want to be married but every conversation doesn't have to be hey you want to go to coffee hey you right. want to hang out right, hey, you right. Do right treat the the girls as sisters right like how would you want someone to treat your sister how would you treat your sister mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling you you will not miss out on opportunities because you're just being a, a good guy mm -hmm. just being kind and just being a brother to the sister uh if anything it works to your benefit mm -hmm. because you're not getting the the reputation of oh he just always wants to go out to coffee he's mm -hmm. just always trying to do he, like just focus on on loving the lord yes living with the brother brothers in, in community and, and treating the, the women as sisters. And, and I believe that that will work towards your benefit. And the, when the Lord presents the woman that you want to pursue, uh, you will be able to access that relationship because you know how to navigate relationships properly. Mm -hmm. and, and I think another side benefit to treating the women as sisters is that you, you learn how to interact with women. Like totally. most guys don't interact with girls on a day-to-day -day basis like right. we, we're hanging out with the guys uh, so when you treat the women as sisters you understand okay maybe you know i i, I need i don't want to cross that line i mm -hmm. I, I know this conversation is appropriate i know this conversation is appropriate um so you you learn how to interact with women just by being a friend to them from a, from a distance mm -hmm. being a brother to them uh, so young men just just you're not going to miss out on an opportunity because you didn't ask her out on a date. Just be a nice guy. Just mm -hmm. be a brother to the sisters. And I, I believe it will work in your favor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the best ways to interact with women is, and the sisters in the church is to not talk a lot. Brothers <laughs> don't over talk. 
what you do is you ask them lots of questions. Come with 20 questions, you know, the kind of stacked in your pocket and just ask away. And as they get on one topic, start digging into that topic, asking more and more and more. Let them talk. Let them do all the talking. And you will actually build great friendships with the ladies. If you over talk and dominate the conversation and take over everything, you, you, you have zero connection. They're never going to talk to you anymore because you don't listen. And you just talk all the time. So anyways, little tip. Yeah. Little tip. Um, well, number nine keep learning always be a student number nine and the 10 things for young guys keep learning and always be a student stay curious never stop gaining knowledge um you know seek to grow in wisdom and knowledge and uh you know uh the beginning of wisdom is to stay a student do not uh, think you already know yeah even if you already know something you should ask like you don't even if even if you know you should ask like you don't, because when you do that, you're setting yourself up to gain knowledge and wisdom everywhere you go. Um, you know, even if you built a business and you walk up to a man who's built a business, you ask him, how did you build your business? You ask because he has all kinds of gold that you don't know about mm -hmm. sitting there. And uh, you should remain curious and remain a student. The moment that you think that you know, and you think that you know so much that you won't ask and listen is the moment you don't know. You've already lost the game. And the fastest way to gain wisdom, the fastest way to gain knowledge is just to ask people everywhere you go and just to sit in a place of student. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know the answers to these things. I would love to hear your perspective. And if you stay in that place, I'm telling you, you will rake in the gold of wisdom and knowledge so fast because old men are waiting to give it to you. Older guys are waiting. Even if a young guy walks up to me and asks me, I'm like, I'll just dump it on him. I'll tell him everything. Yep. But it's the kid who walks up and says, oh, yeah, I got it. You know, I know what I'm doing. You know, I don't need that help. Nope, I'm good. Dude, you're, you're light years ahead, <laughs> you know, behind. You're, you're, you're going to take you a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, that's it's such a, a great point to just be a student to have that posture, and it also um, creates the perception in the minds of others like he, he's a humble person, like he's he's not too proud, he's not too uh, big headed to to receive, and and people want to help, like mm -hmm. they they want to to contribute to your growth, and and I would add it the moment you think that you know it all, that growth stops, like mm -hmm. you, you you've hit a ceiling, you've no longer mm -hmm. uh, been able to to achieve more knowledge or information. And I would encourage too, like if, if you're not able to get what you're looking for from people, do some research, start reading some books. Mm. I mean, it's, a, it's a lost art now. Like yeah. I want to live on these 10 second clips, but right. do some actual research. Right. I heard people say like, oh, I did some research. I watched a bunch of YouTube videos. Right. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's kind of research, I guess, kind of <laughs> but maybe read some articles, like some, some peer reviewed articles, mm. read, a, read a book, read one of the classics. There's, mm. there's so many classic works of, of, of art, of, of, of literature that can be consumed. And there's some great truths in there and you may not agree with everything, but you chew the meat and spit out the bones and, and you enjoy those things and it will open your mind to new ideas. Uh, you don't like reading. I don't like reading. But I got Audible and I start listening totally. to books. You know, I have a, a drive, so I'll, I'll pop in a book and, and I'll start consuming information. And you'll be surprised how that uh, opens your mind up to, to new ideas. So read some biographies. Read, read how people live before you. You want to learn and gain some appreciation for where we are today in society and what we enjoy. Read some, some of those autobiographies from people who, who've gone before us, who had it way harder and way tougher than we've had. And, and you will appreciate where you're at and it'll even motivate you to want to uh, pursue more. Uh, so I would encourage, again, that, that, that search for knowledge or, or um, you know, just becoming a person who continues to, to learn all the days of their life. And, and that also can bleed into just glean, like you said, from other people who have that gold. Older men, find a mentor. Find someone that you can, that you respect, that you admire. Find a guy who's married, has kids, who has a life that you would want in, in that season of life mm -hmm. uh, where his wife still loves him, his kids love him, they walk with the Lord. That guy 
is the guy that you want to go talk to. The guy who's, who's been divorced five times and has barely got his money together, probably wouldn't ask that guy for, for I mean, he may have some things he wants to share from things sure. that he's, he's learned uh, through his mistakes, but, but look for the guy who's doing well and, and see if you can get time with him. Yeah. And most likely that guy is probably gonna be busy. So, totally. so don't get disappointed when you don't get every moment of the time. But right. if he opens his, the door for you to have time with them, if you have to change your schedule, if you have to, you know, cut class, whatever you got to do, you want to spend time with that guy, make mm -hmm. it a priority. And man, the times that I've spent with older men and been able to sit down with them, I've, it's better than any textbook that I could have ever read, any book that I could have ever read, totally. especially godly it's men who have their stuff together. It's, it's such a Chico. Like I'm, I'm just soaking it up and and like you're right they want to give away that information they they want to to share that with someone who's actually going to do something with it mm -hmm. um, but if you're a sloppy guy who's just not doing kind of got stuff together you're not working you don't got a job you're unmotivated don't expect that guy to give up his precious time with his family and his business to spend time with you when you don't plan to do anything with yep. him well there's nothing worse when a young guy walks up you know and he's you know, you kind of ask for advice and then you start trying to, like, you're like, I'm going to give him some gold, you know, I'm going to give him the best I got. He starts looking around, you know, he's like not listening, he's not focused, you know, you're just like, like, what's wrong with you, dude? Like, not paying attention, not listening, not deeply trying to understand what someone's trying to say, like, you're missing, and, and most of the time is the sloppy guys who do this kind of stuff, you know, they just like their attention span is about, you know, three seconds, you know, and then they're on to something else. And you're like, man, you, I can see you are not going anywhere in life because the people who go the farthest are those who listen the best. And whether it's listening to books, it's listening to people, it's listening um, to all that is around you and, and forming ears that can take on a lot of listening. And it's hard to listen, isn't it? Because listening requires that we lower ourselves and choose to tune in and give our attention to another person and the only way we can do that is we must value what they're saying and we must value who they are we must think that they have something to share with us and most people won't do that they'll literally they'll look at a person and they start talking and their ears just tune out and they just go somewhere else and they start looking around and you know, for whatever reason that's happened but I'm telling you that if you want to learn quickly and you want to gain a lot of wisdom and you want to be very successful, you must learn to listen. CEOs have to listen to their board and to their people to know what's going on to make great decisions. And good husbands have to listen to their wives and dads have to listen to their kids to really figure out what's going on. And uh, good employees got to listen to what's going on around them. And uh, again, if you want to grow as a godly man, um, you have got to listen to the older men around you. They're offering so much gold. And the guys are just like, I don't have time for that. I'm going to go figure it out on my own. And it's like, if you want the cheat code, it's sitting right there. They'll literally like shortcut the whole thing for you. You know, um, you know, it, I, it, yeah, it's like, right. You know, it's, it's, I don't know why this context is sitting in my, um, you know, in, in my mind, but it's like, you know, Dave, I, I think like if you, you know, you have the option, sit down with Steven Spielberg, you know, for, you know, one month and listen to everything that he has to say about building film and movies or go to USC, you know, for four years and do film school, you know, which one do you take? And it's like, I want the, I want the degree, you know, I want the USC degree, you know, all the nuts and bolts that come along with that, which is absolutely fantastic. But man, if you got to sit down, you know how many, he would short circuit the whole thing. He would basically say, listen, this is how this, the industry works. Okay. You need to talk to this person, get this person going. This is who you write the story with. This is how it works. These are the hooks. This is how this whole system works. Okay. Yeah. I know all the teachers over there at USC. And I'm going to tell you, this one's gold, that one's not, that one's not, that one. I mean, you're going to, he's going to cheat code the whole thing for you. And this is what, there are so many old men standing around waiting to give you young guys gold. And so now, I've tuned my ears to this. Anytime an old man starts talking, I'm going to zoom in, dude. And I'm just like, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Because 
I have been able to hurdle so many, uh, I mean, cheat codes, so many things that I wasn't supposed to simply because a guy gave me the information up front and said, do it this way and you're going to win. And I'd be like, okay, I'm doing that. And I would short, shortcut it and then people be like, how'd you do that? I said, just listen to the old man. Mm -hmm. That's it. I, I've heard some guys, they'll push back and like, oh, I tried to find a mentor, but, you know, they weren't able to meet with me and da 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 And it's like, again, one of the earlier points, be resilient. Like, that didn't work out with that guy? Go find another guy or, or ask that guy again. Yes. I, I promise you, you keep bothering that guy. He goes, all right, fine. I got 30 minutes before I start work. Meet me over at such and such coffee shop. We'll hang out for a little bit. And just be resilient. Keep pushing forward. I mean, it's, it's really what we're called to in the scriptures, to, to disciple and then to be discipled. Mm -hmm. We should be continuing to learn. Be a student. A student of the scriptures, but a student of life as well. Like God has created us to enjoy this life, to, to worship Him, uh, to, to glorify Him, and to enjoy Him for forever. And what better way to, to do that than from learning from people who are doing it well already. Uh, how to learn to, to enjoy this life that He's created us to as we obey the scriptures, and, and heed the counsel of wise men who've gone before us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's gold sitting there. Um, final one mm -hmm. of 10 things that every young guy should know is have integrity, have character, do the right thing when no one's looking. The Lord, for sure, is looking, always watching. Mm -hmm. But do the right thing when no one's watching. Why? Why would I do that? No one's watching. Because it is sowing into your character long term. And if you do the right thing consistently, you attempt to do the right thing consistently when no one is looking, when the Lord's watching, it's you and the Lord. You keep doing that long term. You're going to then do the right thing in the future. And you're going to do the right thing when it really matters. You're going to make the right decisions in life. But if you sow bad seed in the secret and you don't have integrity and you don't have character, it is going to come out mm -hmm. in real time. And it's going to destroy your reputation and you're not going to have a good rapport with people and you don't have good rapport and good reputation with people. You're not going to get anywhere in life. You're going to be on your own. And so doing the right thing, um, and the little things, doing the right thing when no one else is around, you know, disciplining yourself to pick up that piece of trash. My coach used to always say, pick up that piece of trash. No one's around. Nobody's going to see you do it. Pick it up. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. And if you can discipline yourself to do these little things, it will help you m when the big decision comes. Mm -hmm. The big one to do the right thing at the right time. And because if you do the wrong thing at that big time, it'll cost you everything. So sad when, when we see those things happen. And it's just integrity was lacking. Mm. And uh, integrity is, you know, I, keep, I keep thinking about, you know, the, the scriptures teaches that when we show up on that day before the Lord and he says, uh, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm, mm. Uh, a person of integrity is faithful. They're, they're continuing to, to do the things that God has called them to do, to do the right thing. Like you said, when no one is looking, being faithful as a, as a young man, man, it, it just, it has so much opportunity to grow so much great fruit in your life. Just that, that exercise of uh, just, I don't know. It, it, it has so many benefits, mm -hmm. uh, not only for yourself, but for those around you it's as well. It's training your mind and your heart, you know, to do right in the future. Exactly. And, and it's, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful display of, of who God is too. Like he's, he's the same always. He never changes. You're, you're a representative of God. So you be consistent as well and, and try to represent the Lord in, in every aspect of your life. Be a man of integrity, doing the right thing, even when no one's looking mm. Um, knowing that the Lord is looking mm. and, and he's always uh, all, everywhere at all times. So we, we want to represent and, and stand before him and hear those words. Well done, good and faithful, sir. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. When something bad happens and like some great leader like falls and just like destroys everything around them, that is, that's not one major thing that they did. That, that is hundreds of compromise in the secret place of integrity that led to this massive, that's the thing. When the big decision came, they just fell flat on their face because of all the small compromise in the past. And it's not easy. And you got to understand that there's plenty of grace that God is ready and willing to forgive and show grace. And so as often as we can, 
we should not take advantage of it, but say, you know what? I love the Lord. I want to walk with him and I'm going to discipline myself to try to do the right thing. And if that's a correction for some of their brothers today, praise God, enjoy it, mm -hmm. soak it in and get on with it and get on walking with the Lord closer to him and try to honor him with your life and watch, watch the fruit. As Aaron said, you know, come forth, watch the dividends pay into your life in the future. Aaron, we just did two hours. Dang. I knew it was going to go. That was good. Aaron told me up front, I'm like, we're going to knock this out in one hour. He's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much good stuff there, man, yeah. that I think guys need to hear. And, and ultimately, it's just so that you can enjoy life. Yes. We have great lives, great yes. opportunity to enjoy yes. what God has created, enjoy Him, and enjoy those around us. Um, just, just by doing these 10 things, you increase your odds of maximizing your joy all the days of your life. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave it at that. It was so good. Such a good closer. Thanks for doing it, brother. Good times. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. Share it with a brother who needs to hear it. Share it with the young guy. Love you guys. Love you, Aaron. Love you, Dave. Thank you, guys. I uh, love running with you, man. It's a joy. I got great brothers around me. Yes, I do, too. Let's go get some lunch. Let's do it. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the show today. Uh, we really appreciate you. And it would mean the world to us if you would like or subscribe and you would write an honest review for us. It's one of the fastest ways to get the word out for us and to share it with others. And so if you don't like uh, texting for a review, uh, you can always voice to text. That's a fast way to write one and really help us uh, rate the show and get it out to the world. Thank you so much for listening again. We hope it continues to bless you and encourage you each and every week. And of course, leave you stoked.